Um, we pick up our um, episode 8 left off. So, kinakausap ni ng prophet si Yuya. And her parting shot was, of course, we, we all know, the threat known as the Kirihara brothers must be removed from their world. It sparked a uh, chain of events that, le- uh, that now leads to this episode. We found out in this episode that the prophet's name is Akiko Okuhara. Uh, psychic din. Pero, uh, as we found out later on in the episode, parang kaluluwa na lang. I'll explain. She psychically um, summons uh, the Kurokis, si Rika, at si, uh, I forgot the thug-looking guy's name, to, to be pitted against the Kirihara brothers, which, which she forcibly summoned. A fight in Zeus, pero, inutusan niya mga Kuroki na wag makialam. So, sila Rika, at saka yung... Basta sila ang umengage. Ang pinuntirian nila rito, si Naoto. Who is the stronger brother? Kasi si Naoya, uh, hindi na masyadong, hindi na masyadong fighter yan eh. He's an empath. So, tinira muna siya. Until finally, they were able to pin Naoto down with some swords. At, uh, para siyang pinako na, para, para siyang si Kristo na pinako sa krus eh. Then, who interferes to help the Kiriharas? Masayuki. Yung, yung kanyang maladimon yung psychic powers. Her, that kid's psychic powers is scary. It's scary as fuck. Pero, it has been preordained na siya ang tutulong sa mga kirihara. And he did. Not only did he, um, he helped the kiriharas escape, he also um, psychically paralyzed Rika and uh, he sucked away at their at their life forces so after um, after he did that nawala na lang siya nawala na mga kirihara the kirihara suddenly woke up back in the intermediary world hindi pala psychic hindi pala psychic world yun it's the intermediary world nadatnan nila si Masayuki at ang nanay niya reunited and bigla then unti-unting nawala Mikuria explained that they've done their rules. So, bumalik na sila sa dati. And, his parting shot to the Kiriharas were, if there is someone in need of your help and they reached out to you, help them. Yun lang yun. Yun lang ang bottom line na sinasabi ni Mikuria rito. Final scene. The prophet has been met by by Shoko Futami herself. Who is actually Misaki? Si Professor Misaki. Yung kaibigan ni Professor Mikuria. Na, who was the main proponent of all of this? Kinumpronta si Okuhara ni Misaki through Soko. Sabi lang ni Misaki. Oh, sorry to disrespect. Hanggang ngayon, you are still clinging on to this material world. He just made the prophet realize that she's just a... She's only just a soul now clinging on to pieces of her memories sabi lang niya and there is proof the moment he said that unti-unti na nawawala <laughs> uh, ang katawan ng matandang to hanggang sa whew, nawala na na parang bula on the outside they could not detect any vital signs anymore from her it means bring that down prophet pero the prophet actually left the message before she, before she, uh, well, before she had this rude awakening from Misaki. The origin of all this is in Russia. Destroy it. Ooh, talagang roto na finali na. <laughs> so let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Whew. Um, I couldn't remember any slow moments in this uh, in this episode. Walay. Especially during the time when um, Mitsuo and Reiko were actually tor- they were they've come to the point that they're already torturing Naoto. That was fucking hard to watch. Abaye. Wow, I've never seen I've never seen that much blood in this anime. Not uh, not during the pilot, talagang ngayon lang. 
This is probably the anime's most violent episode. Talagang uh, kinawawa si Naoto rito. Because he is in total... Well, the Kiriharas are in totally unfamiliar territory here. They are in enemy territory kasi ito yung domain ng prophet. Si Okuhara. Talagang kontrolado niya ang environment. So, she just gave... And then she just heightened Reikas and Mitsuo's um, current latent powers para ma-maximize sila. Para matalo nila si Naoto. And they were this close to, to, to totally killing Naoto. Yun nga lang. Nakialam si Masayuki. This is how scary Masayuki's powers are. Like Yuya, he can also tap into the network. Para ni si Okuhara. Okuhara's biggest mistake was probably leaving that network open enough for Masayuki to get in. Ayun, kapasok yung bata. He was able to save the Kiriharas and eliminate two of um, um, two of the Koroki's closest associates. Mentally, ah, mentally. <laughs> Nakakatakot ka laban ng batang to. And uh, it makes you feel glad that He's on the side of the Kiriharas. He's on the side of the, both the Kiriharas and the Korokis. The pacing is making me say this because that, this is what I've realized. Talagang, ang pinuntirya niya rito yung dalawang kasama ng mga Koroki. At pinagtatawa ng tanga niya. Natatawa pa nga siya habang ginagawa niya. Bata pa lang, sadista niya. Right? This is how sadistic this kid is. And it... It almost creeped the shit out of me. I suddenly got to see Gorasi feels when Masayuki was slowly eating away at psychic personas. Parang, pa, parang unti-unti niyang kinakain na parang ano eh, na parang, parang chocolate cake lang eh. Right, that kid is scary. And the pace he made to realize that. Okay? Kaya, impeccable impeccable ang pacing ng episode na to. It will make you feel the intensity. It will make you feel um, that you're... It will make you feel along the Kiriharas that you're being defeated as well. I got that feeling. Go naman! First gear ship nung combatants from both sides were summoned by Okuhara. Uh, the side of the Korokis and of course the Kiriharas. Why did I call this a gear ship? Simple lang mga ka lifestyle. We now know who gives the who gives orders to the SWE. Etong si Okuhara. And this gear ship will also tell you how powerful a psychic this um this lady is. Pero ang mahirap nga lang, her physical body is almost giving out. Kumaga, binubuhay na lang siya ng SWE para makapagbigay pa rin siya ng orders sa kanila. Deep dive. That's why I'm. All, that's why I also call this a gear ship. Second gear ship was when Masayuki uh, came in for the assist. Dito talaga nagpakita ng bangis ang bata. Here's the bottom line with Masayuki. When it comes to the SWE, except for the Korokis, he shows no remorse nor mercy. <laughs> Wala siyang bubuhayin ng SWE. And, wow. And on, siguro on this occasion, he's on neither side. He just played his role according to Shoko's prophecies in that notebook. Oh, by the way, the notebook is safe because in the opening scene, kinuha ni Yui. Buti na lang, hindi napunta sa SWE yung notebook na to. <laughs> Kung hindi, oh, it'll be a far more disturbing episode than that. Pero, if you were to ask Masayuki, he's going to, uh, I think he enjoyed that role because he gets to kill another SWE. You, you, you could see that you could see that childish smile on his face. He's just here to to fulfill his role. Kaya nga nung nag um kumaga, nagsama-sama sila uh, the Kiriharas and the Tachibanas in the inter- intermediary world. Uh, when Masayuki got reunited with his mother, ayun, nawala sila, nawala sila ng dahan-dahan eh. Because, they already fulfilled their roles. And it's all according to Shoko's uh, prophecies. 
Or should I say Masaki? Hmm. Ah. I'm, uh, I'm very sure those questions will be answered in in the final three episodes. Right? So hang on tayo. Final Gearship was of course when the Prophet actually gave her final word to the SWE. Her final orders. Na pumunta sa Russia at sirain ang pinagmunan ng lahat ng to. Even in death, she's a pain in the ass. Hmm. Excuse me. Egg pie. <laughs> what does this mean? Simple lang. That's why I call it a gear shift. It is an obvious setup for the final three episodes. Dun siguro magtatapos ang anime na to sa Russia. Where, where it all started, where Mikuria is in, uh, where both Mikuria and Shoko are in, sus- in suspended animation. So, their psychic selves are, no? Are, are out here in both the psychic and the physical worlds. Pero, sinabi na rin ni Ikuria in episode 7, and then, so 7 na ba? 6, na Shoko's um, psych, psychic self has been jumping from dimension to dimension, from timeline to timeline. It's an all-important gear shift. Ito. Dahil, I think the final battle will It will all be settled in Russia Dito talaga magkakaalaman kung sino nagsasabi ng totoo Dito rin magkakasubukan ng lakas ang mga Kuroket Kirihara oh, we, Well, we gotta wait for that <laughs> And it's now down to the final three episodes Any of these episodes can show that These three dishes that I saw Oh hell yeah they will all play a role in the final three episodes. We can simply look back to this episode to what is about to happen in those final three. Plotwise, Malinis. Malinis! And I can say that twice. God, I'm doing a loop right now. <laughs> but anyway, the plot is so clean, you can deep dive it all day and hindi ka magsasawa you won't stop thinking conspiracy theories surrounding this episode alam na natin ang pangalan ng prophet si Akiko Okuhara we now know her true name and we now know her true intentions because of Misaki she thinks she's protecting the material world from the psychic world but sabi ni Misaki nope you're not you are just a soul clinging on to pieces of your memories. And there's proof. Nung pagkasabi ni Misa Kinon, unti-unti na siya nawawala. <laughs> That's one less problem to worry about. No more profit. No more, uh, no more entity giving orders to the SWE. But she gave out only one. If it weren't for this plot, we wouldn't realize that... Uy! Mukhang patapos na ang anime na to. <laughs> Mukhang dito nga sila magkakasubukan eh, ang mga kurokit ang mga kirihara here in Russia. Now, I don't know how they're going to get there, but well, they're all psychics now. So, they're, they're going to find a way. And of course, the kurokis, they have the resources because they got the SWE. So, pupunta na sila doon. The next few episodes can give, uh, can give us a fight scene as brutal as the one here in episode 9. We're going to have a slam bang final three episodes, not just the finale. That's what this plot is telling me. <laughs> Grabe. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Trust me on that. You can take that to the bank, mga lifestyle. So, Night Dead 2041, episode 9. Nakapag Gandang episode nga eh. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! Based on what we now know from this episode and probably from the previous one, we're going to have a slam bang final three episodes. Okay? Talagang, if the fight scenes are this brutal and if the um, the revelations are 
this complicated. <laughs> we will have a slam bang final three episodes. Ilang yung finale yung aabangan natin dito. Night 2041 is about to end spectacularly. That's uh, that's all I can see right now. Based on again, based on what has happened here and in episode 8. So combine those two episodes, siyempre road to the finale ni mula nung episode 8 pa. But it has set us up for a possible slam bang final 3 episodes. I strongly suggest you start watching it now before the next episode airs next week or yeah as of this recording yeah, nah. so again my 2041 episode 9 two thumbs up so in the tradition of Tokyo Revengers Sunny Boy and Fena Pirate Princess no teasers <laughs> these are uh, the three that I mentioned and this one are the only four animes that that don't tease to the next episode but they are all great animes talagang uh, you'll be glued to your seat you will you will deep dive into every single one it's well worth your time so let's just do the drill, mga lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Ang pangalan pala ng team ni Yo ay Team Funbari Hot Springs. Yun kasi ang pangalan ng, ng resort nilang dalawa ni Ana. So, it's a sort of advertising. Well, alam na natin lahat na tayo mga long-time Shaman King fans that Ana is also business-minded. And they're up against a team known as the Icemen. Kumbaga, ice-based lahat ang magic nila. They're ice-based shamans. Just like, um, just like Horo Horo. Yan. Horo Horo is an ice-based shaman. In Biz Night, pakita nila yung angas nila kila Yo in the match itself. Pinakita muna nila yung angas sila sa Team The Ren. Sinabi mismo ni Ren, Do not take yo lightly. Dahil sa pag-aangas silang ito, naispiyahan sila tuloy ni Amidamaru. Tinimbrihan na niya si, Ren, si Yo kung ano mga nagagawa ng mga oversold nila. E nagpakita ba naman ng... Nagyabang eh. Oh, sige. Alam na ni Yo kung paano sila tatalunin. Yo's team was the last to show up in the ring. So... Yabang pa eh. Mabut. Sabi ng captain, mabut. Mabuti na pala nagpakita kayo. Okay, sige. Daldal, daldal. Pinakita rin ni Yo ang kanyang oversold. Yo is this confident because all three of them, siya, si Ryunosuke, at si Faust, they all learned the Ultra Senji Ria Ryaketsuko. Yung package na pinadala kay Yo from the Asakura, ng, ng lolo niya, from the Asakura family. Yo pala, this is a um an old antiquated sword. Na nakapag inincorporate mo ang oversold dito, it'll be one hell of a weapon. Yung nga nangyari, pinakita niya sa Iceman ang kanyang oversold, Spirit of Sword. Kinumbay niya si Amidamaru with this one. Super laking sword. <laughs> He just realized that Amidamaru, over the 600 years of existence as a ghost, naging higher spirit na siya. He has become a sword spirit. The Ultra Senji Ryaketsuko took advantage of this. Kung maga, inelevate niya ang pagiging uh, spirit ally ni Amidamaru. This is the product. Pero, nabigatan si Yo, winidraw muna. <laughs> The Icemen are taking this as an insult. I, I don't know what I don't know why they're why they're why they why their team mindset is like this. Nabibigatan yung tao eh. Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba sa akala niyo? Match started sinabi ni Yo. Nga, umpisa na natin ang labang to. Ang unang pinuntirya ng Icemen si Faust. 
Porkit nasa wheelchair. Not only did Faust show his um his true power as a shaman, he showed his demonic side here as a necromancer. Kumbaga, gumamit din siya ng Ultra Senji Ryaketsuko. Inincorporate niya sa style niya. And lo and behold, in the final scene, inincorporate niya kay Elisa, yung, yung spiritala niya, who's also, his, who's also his late wife. He now has this oversoul, Mephisto E. Maganda si Elisa. But in this case, she is scary as fuck. Wow! Kanina pa sinasabi ng mga Iceman that um uh, that team Football Hot Springs has these uh have big ideas ideals have big um to them everything team Football Hot Springs has brought out is half big. O, sabi naman ni Faust, let's see if you can judge this as half big. Mm, pinakita niya oversold niya. Um according to what he has learned from the Ultra Senji Ryoketsuko. He produces this oversoul. This scary huge oversoul. Talaga nagsimu na nalaman kasi eh. Siya ang unang pinuntiri ng Iceman eh. Hindi si Yo, hindi rin si Ryu. Hindi rin si Ryunosuke. Siya. Pagkit siya naka-wheelchair at meron pang uh, meron pang nakakapit na blood bag sa kanya. Let's break this episode down ARD style. Okay? Can't wait to dig in. Pace! First third ng episode pa lang, medyo tense na. Kasi may sinabi si Yo dito that no, fighting is going to win in one blow. Eh lahat ng shaman na kumakain sa cafeteria nun, nagtinginan lahat sa kanya. Uh, kahit, kahit yung team do rin, eh, eh, winaan nga siya ni Ren eh. Sabi ni Ren, What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> Kaya siguro, Ba't ka nagsabi ng ganun dito? <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, winarningan din siya ng mga kasama niya. Sabi niya, something to this effect. I'm just that confident. Doon pa lang, bumilis na ang pace ng episode na to. Now, if any one of you has seen, has seen the episode at medyo nababagalan kayo, hindi pa kayo sanay manood ng anime, ibig sabihin. But for us, anime fans, for tense moments like this, you know the pace will pick up. And it has picked up for the rest of the episode. Talagang angasan, yabangan, at syempre bakbakan. Pero, in the final scene, Faust has had enough, obviously. <laughs> Ipapakita na niya yung, pag- yung pagiging demonyo niya rito. That's what the pace will make you realize. The pace is that impeccable. Yeah. Di ka ba bubore? Except if you're, um, except if it's your first time watching an anime. Um, flow naman. Excuse me. First gear shift was of course that scene na binanggit ko sa cafeteria. If you don't want to catch the ire of your fellow competitors, don't say, thing, don't say things such as that. But when it comes to you, knowing the, um, the kind of free spirit that he is, he will say such things. And he is that confident now in going through the shaman fight without a loss. Kasi kakaibayat ng technique itong Ultra Senji Ryaketsuko eh. Yung na pinadala sa kanila ng lolo niya. So, the three of them learned this. Yan, si Yo, si Faust, at si Rinosuke. This is a... Obviously, it's an Asakura family secret technique. Ayaw sabihin ni Anna kay Ren. Pero, Anna's guaranteeing one thing. Yo's team will win. Sinishare lang nila ang secret na to to their, to, to, uh, to close allies. So, ang, she's referring to Faust and Ryunosuke right now. Kasi sila ang magka- dalawang kasama ni Yo sa team na to. We might as well let them in on this secret technique. Kailangan aralin na rin nila. Uh, yun nga siguro ang ginawa nila tatlo. Especially si Faust. Second gear ship was when the Iceman started attacking Faust. Porque siguro uh, it's easy to deduce na 
Faust is the weakest of the team. But nope. The Icemen were badly mistaken. Nakakatayo rin pala si Faust. Pero, with the assist of... With his dog skeleton. <laughs> Pumalit sa, sa mga legs niya. Grabe. Dito ginamit ni Faust ang kanyang, kanyang pagiging necromancer. He is able to stand and walk because of because of this power of his. Then of course, dila bakit si Elisa, yung kanyang spirit ally, who's also yeah we all know was his late wife. Through this gearship, we can also say that mukhang na master na ni Faust ang ultra century yaketsu. Halatang halata. And this gearship will also uh, will also tell us that. How devoted a husband Faust was to his wife. Eh, kahit, kahit ispirito na eh, pinoprotekta pa rin niya eh. He literally, take, he, literally, he literally took a bullet for for Elisa. Eh, isang pupuntiriyahin eh. So, humarang siya. Eh, nagtaka rin ang mga Icemen. You can't harm a spirit. Ano ba ang kinagawa ng... Ano ba ang kinagawa ng lukulukong to? Nagpapakabatay ba to? So that was that was their mindset. Halata, yun, halata yun ang mindset ng mga Icemen. Final gear ship was of course when Faust finally revealed his newly evolved oversoul because of this secret technique. Ayun nga si Mephisto E. Kinumbay niya yung si Elisa with his intermediary. Uh, I forgot what his intermediary is. Eh. Yun ang kinalabasan. And of course, using the Ultra Senji Ryoketsu. If you've seen the episode, Elisa is both beautiful and scary. Yung laki nang yun. <laughs> yung ganda laki nang yun. Wow. Faust is now hellbent on... Well, probably turning the Iceman into zombies. <laughs> he is a necromancer after all. I can't wait for the next episode on what, for what, what he's gonna do to these three. <laughs> Talagang, this gearship will make you... Uh, become excited for the next episode. So, these three gearships that I saw, the first two will will play a factor down the line in this anime. But for the last, it will play a role in the next episode at least. Plot-wise, malinis. Bakit? Kahit meron siya mga flashback moments like yung kay yung kay Faust, yung origins ni, yan, yung origins ni Lisa, and of course, how Yo recruited him for Team Foodbury Hot Springs, and, you can, you can set them aside muna, and enjoy the, uh, the story of the main timeline. So, the continuity is still being followed. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. Your mind is still on on the main continuity. Kaya, you can, you can set aside these two flashbacks. Parang ano lang. You can go back to that and, oh, okay, ganito nangyari. Oh, okay, ganito nangyari. Sige. All with the story. Ganun lang yun eh. <laughs> so, you tend to go back to the main continuity. It's not, the plot won't, the plot didn't veer me away from the main, from, from the, from the actual continuity of this episode. Kaya ganun. So, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Giving us another great episode from this reboot. Yeah. Studio Bridge. Ay, hindi pa ito. Hindi pa ito rating ko ha. Studio Bridge, hats off to you guys. Talagang, pinaninindigan nyo ang ang pagkakasabi nyo na you're going to follow the you're going to follow the manga to the letter personally I don't remember I don't remember these scenes from the reboot uh, from from the original series hindi ko talaga matandaan so these scenes are entirely new to me sigurado sa manga galing ito so Shaman King 2021 episode 22 hindi yung fausat Eh, ang gandong episode nga eh. Oh. Two times up. Excuse me. 
I am this excited about this episode. Kaya, ang dami kong, uh, medyo nakarami ako sa water break in this episode. So, bear with me mga kalaista. If I'm taking a water break, that means I am, I am, uh, I'm actually hyped about this episode. I'm actually hyped about an anime episode. I need to relax a bit so that I can, so that I can properly deliver you a, uh, a more unbiased review. Overall, this episode was a great one. Number one, there is. I couldn't remember scenes from this episode in in the original series. Tell you frankly, mga lifestyle. Talaga, this episode is totally new to me. Kaya medyo ooh, ganun pala. <laughs> At saka yung mga ano eh, may mga may mga may mga comic relief din like yung akang akala ni Horo Horo na na natatakot na si Ren Keyo dahil nagpakita na ng nakasiyo sa ni Ren. Like hell I will. <laughs> so ano lang kasi sabi lang kasi ni Ren doon I've already seen who's going to win. I already, I already know who's going to win here. So bakit ko baka papanoorin? Well, he's got a point. You might as well go back to your dorm and, and go to sleep. Take, get some rest, okay? Kasi baka next day may laban na naman kayo. Ganun yan eh. Ganun sa shaman fight eh. May, may laban kayo today, the next day meron na naman. So you really need to... Uh, get it as much rest as possible. Uh, yeah, Ren has a point there. But mga lang babanoorin, eh, alam mo na kung sino mananalo. Eh, it's a total time waster. Yeah. Ren is just being productive. This is how his uptightness serves him. Si Ren. If he weren't this uptight, he wouldn't know when to, when to pace himself. Okay? That's why he's a loved character in Shaman King. Eh, we, we, we all love Ren. Next episode, mm. um, uh, I, I really want to know what's what's going to happen to these ice men when uh, after Faust is overdone with them. How do you lose the with that boy? With that new oversoul that new oversoul of his. I'm scared. I'm scared. Although, Elisa, but as Mephisto E. Ugh. You don't want that needle going through your body. <laughs> Ang laki. So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 22. Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Maka Lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Mm. Interesting, but I'm not going to trust it as usual. Let's just do the drill, Maka Lifestyle, for that episode. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, all right? Another brutal episode. Okay, here's how it went. Opening scene. So, um, we see Hanyu uh, receiving Rika after... She, after Uwi, she kills her. Okay, previous episode. Then, in a scene that wasn't seen from season one, Hanyu reveals her origin. So, she is the or, yung, um her, her full name is Hanyu Furode. Okay? So, siya ang pinaka ancestor ni Rika. There is a condition para hindi ma-break ang, para ma-break, para tuluyang ma-break ang curse na to sa inamisawa. There has to be eight cons- well, for eight consecutive generations dapat merong ipanganak ipanganak na babae. Pangwalo si Rika. So, laking tuwa si Hanyo dahil marireincarnate na si Oyashiro sama. Thereby breaking this curse. But um it seems that the curse is still ongoing dahil Ang pinupuntirya nito si Rika. You remember that scene when where where Hanyu told her to get that sword from the Oyashiro sama statue supposedly. Na ang nadadlan niya niya piraso lang ng blade. Well, 
Satoko did something to it. Inunahan niya si Rika doon, kinuha niya yung actual sword na super haba. And a piece of it broke off. Yun, yun ang nagatnan ni Rika. Akala naman ni Satoko that, what? She is, she's complete, she's, uh, she's one again. Dahil she, I think she threw the sword away or just hid it somewhere. But nevertheless, nagtagumpay siya labang kay Rika. Or so it seems. That piece of sword is still with Rika. Pero, hindi niya, well, we all know what happened in episode, uh, episode 14 or 15. Na hindi niya kagad ginamit yung blade niya para, para gilitin niyo sarili niyang leeg. Instead, she will wait for five more loops. Yun ang pinakita na second half ng episode. All, and then, four of the five loops na talagang brutal. Okay? If you've seen episode 16, wow! It was, it's, it's the reboot, it's one of the reboot's most brutal episodes. I tell you, mga ka-lifestyle. Talagang, kung hindi kayo sanay manood ng mga ganong klaseng mga ganong klaseng episode sa isang anime, do not watch it. Baka magsuka kayo. If you're not into watching into movies, into movies or any, even animes with a disturbing nature, wag yun na pano orin. Baka sigurado you will throw up after watching it, or during or while or while the scene is going on. Hindi pa nakita. Final scene, but <coughs> as usual, natatawa na naman si si you si Iwa sa mga nakikita niya, all of a sudden, yung replica ng temple na nasa likod niya, it starts to crack, even the art, biglang pok, sumabog, nag-converge, presto, si Hanyo ang lumabas. Ang sinabi lang ni Hanyo kay Iwa, at last, I found you. Woo! So, Matagal na palang hinahanap ni Hanyo si Iwa. Looks like there's some help to pay in the ne- in the final three episodes of this anime. Yun ang... Wow! Talaga naman! Pinaalala pa sa akin yung apat na loop na yun. Yung, yeah, yung apat na loop na yun na talagang minadaling... Uh, yeah, talagang minadaling ni Rika. Wherein, she gets... She gets her... Uh, she gets her head cut off. Then, yung pumugod sa kanyang ulo, pinatay naman ni Sato ko. Then, she gets drowned. Uh, with, with, you know, may bato. Na may bato nakakabit sa paa niya. Then, she gets to... Then, she gets her... She gets her brains bashed in by Keiichi. That was brutal. <laughs> That was brutal! Then, of course, yung... Uh, I forgot the other one. Pero... Four loops yun. Four consecutive loops na na talagang nagpapatay na siya talaga para para dumating na sa pang limang loop. Wow! So, let's break it down. ARD style. Pace. Second, third of the episode, this is where it became really brutal. Dahil, this is where Rika was supposed to find that sword. Pero, wala siya nadatang kundi yung isang uh, isang baling piraso. Unbeknownst to her, akala niya siguro na matagal ng matagal na may sira ang sword na to. Pero, uh, I think she let it slide. At least nakuha niya yung buong sword. Talagang, it's it's a it's a really matatakot ka sa itsura ng espadang ito. It's a it's a sword with a very long blade tapos meron pang apat pa na lumalabas pa doon sa blade na yun. Apat o tatlo. So, talagang, when someone, when someone hacks you with this, talagang pugot ang ulo mo. Kasi may second blade pa darating eh. Kung baga, kung meron pang, kung mayroon, mayroong na-encounter na buto, sasalogin lang yun. Pak! Parang, parang razor ng Gillette, double-bladed. Diba? First shave, 
cuts off the cuts off most of the facial hair. Then the second one cuts off the root. Ganun yun dito. Ganun ang ang principle ng sword na to. So, it was a it was a scary looking sword. At nakuha pa ni Sato ko. Just to kasi nalaman niya kay nalaman niya kay Iwa na kapag nakuha ni ni Rika ang espadang ito, she can simply end it all right there. Tapos ang curse ni Uyashiro sama. With that sword. So, nagmadali rin si Sato ko na makuha. Pero unbeknownst to her, nakakuha pa rin ng piraso si Rika. She can use that anytime now. Kaya, well, sige. Sabi, sabi ni Rika in episode 15 or 14. Sige, five more loops. Let's see what let's see what happens. So, wow. That's what really got intense. Okay, nung sa tempo na yun, nung nakuha ni ni uh, ni Sato ko yung yung mismong sword, yung mismong espada. The pace has become absolutely disturbing. Vintage Higurashi disturbing. <laughs> Talagang I was I was swearing my ass off as uh, as a as a reaction to what transpired in those four those first four loops pa lang. Imagine imagine an adult doing that to an 11-year-old kid. Pupugutan mo ng ulo, uh, lulunurin mo by by throwing her entire body into the river na may nakakabit na bato. <laughs> You're that's that's an execution already. <laughs> Grabe. The pacing will make you realize that. You know what? Higurashi has been known for for this kind of pacing which makes it a classic. Sinasabi ko sa inyo mga kalaysa, I've been saying this before. The reboot is better than the original. And this episode showed us why. Pacing. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift there was um no, nung nalaman ni Sato ko na meron pa lang ganitong sword. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang. Now we know, well, although pinalalabas lang lahat ni Sato ko ito as her own, pero for this particular um, event, I guess this is not part of Sato ko's plan. Kung maga, uh, na-sidetrack siya rito. Dahil, doon pa lang sinabi ni Iwa na may ganitong espada. That if Rika gets her hands on this sword, she can end it, she can end the curse right here. By taking her own life with that sword. So, nagmadali ngayon si Sato ko na makuha. Pero, I'm very sure, she doesn't know that a piece has been, nung habang binubunod niyang ganun, kasi ang lit, ang lit ng bata eh. Eh, ang ganun, eh, mahaba pa sa kanya yung ispadang yun. So, she's trying to, muntik lang ka sa, muntik lang ka sa masaksak ng ispada eh, on the way down eh. Let's just say that this gear shift is now telling us that Rika has a piece of that sword while Satoko has the actual sword. Yung pinanggalingan nun. Either way, Rika can end the curse right there Use, by using either one. That's a, uh, that's a riveting gear shift. Second gear shift was during uh, the time Rika had her head cut off by her own mother. Mm, nanay ngayon. Why did I call it the gear shift? Simple lang. Because here is Satoko um, trying to take it as her own. So, papatay na rin siya ng nanay ni Rike. Uh, slash, slash, but iwas. Then, she saw an opening. Mm, Pinarin niya dito ang nanay ni Rika. Blow her brains out, literally, with that gun. Akala niya, Yay! Panalo na naman ako! No! <laughs> what this gear shift is, try- is telling me is that Sorry, Satoko. You're no longer the one in control here. Looks like Hanyu is back. So, yun nga. Which leads us now to the final gear shift. Which is the final scene. Nagpakita na uli si Hanyu. Ngayon, nagharap na sila ni Iwa. This final gear shift is telling us that matagal na palang hinahanap ni Hanyu si Iwa. Probably because um, 
uh, she felt that something is off? Probably. Kaya, bigla, bigla nga ako eh. Puta nga, si, si, si Hanyo to ah! Pa- akala ko naman, akala ko nagla ako na to. Kaya pala siya nagpaalam kay Rika during episode um, 15 or 14, yeah, either 14 or 15. Kaya pala siya nagpaalam kay Rika dahil gusto niyang hanapin si Iwa. Because she has a, um, a good feeling that Iwa is behind all this. Yung parang endless loops and that someone is um, someone else is pulling the strings. So tama siguro ang hinala ni Hanyu through this gear shift. <sighs> These three gear shifts that I've seen Oh hell yeah mga ka lifestyle. These three will be a factor in the final three episodes of Higurashi 2020. I said it na. In case you're not familiar, Higurashi Sotsu is actually season 2 of Higurashi 2020. Now, with the way this episode has been set up through its gear shifts, we are now in for um for a um probably the reboot's most disturbing three episodes. Magtatapos na po ang Higurashi 2020. Final three episodes na. Plot-wise, planchado. Only Higurashi would would uh, would belt out this kind of an iron out plan and still get away with it. <laughs> now, you know why um, this went on, you know why this went on, and you know why Satoko through her this went on. Only Higurashi can do this. <laughs> Kaya, it's a well ironed out plot again by this anime. Galing! Talagang well placed yung scenes as to um, explain why this happened in season 1, why uh, why Sato is doing this because of season 1. Parang ganun yan eh. So, it was a well ironed out plot again by this anime. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And you know the road to the finale. You're on you're on the road to the finale now because of uh, because of this great an episode. Talagang. Especially when Hanyu finally reappears to to to, to, to square off. Yeah, it's a possible square off with Iwa. You know that this anime is about to end. Final three episodes. Dabo! So, Higurashi Sotsu episode 12? You know what I'm going to say? It's a good episode. Guy. Oh, <laughs> two thumbs up! I think I need a water break. My voice is getting a. Uh getting a bit hoarse because of his because of all this uh, all this excitement so we're now down to the final three episodes of the Higurashi reboot what are we gonna do now after Higurashi ends I don't want to think about that right now I just want to see the final three episodes ano ba ang mangyayari ngayon ngayon nag- nagkita na sila you Iwa at si Hanyu. Looks like um, the opening uh, the opening credits is about to come through. Na talagang magkaasago pa rito sila Satoko at si Rika. It's inevitable. Kasi yung mga handler nila ay nagkita na. Excuse me. You could see the look on Hanyu's face when she said those words. Finally, I found you. Iwa must be her evil, must be an evil twin of hers. Kasi, alam niyang hindi gagawa na mabuti to. Kumaga, she is continuing Oyashiro Sama's curse. While, siya naman, gusto niyang matigil na lahat to. Kasi kawawa ang kanya. Kawawa ang bloodline niya. So, 
Kaya pala! Umalis na lang ng ganun, ng... Umalis na lang ng basta-basta si Hanyo eh. Iniwan talaga si, si, si Rika sa ere. Now I know why. The final scene in this episode has just um, answered that question. That's why, that's why they're calling... That's why they're calling season 2 the answer arc. So, nasagot na ang tanong na yun. Hinahanap niya pala si Iwa. And... Um, is she too late already? We don't know yet. Maybe the final three episodes will answer that question. Kaya, tutok na mga ka-lifestyle. Tumutok na kayo. Magtatapos na ang reboot. So again, Higurashi Sotsu episode 12. Mm. Two thumbs up. Another I don't know how... How the title of the next episode has been teasered Kasi wala namang ano eh Walang Walang translation eh I find it Disturbing Maybe uh, Maybe they're yeah, Maybe they're Mentally setting us up For the final three episodes Siguro Ganon ka Ganon ka brutal Ang final three episodes ng reboot But That's just my theory what are your theories, mga ka lifestyle? Comment now. Hey, it's right there in the comments. Right there in the comment section. Give me your thoughts. So we'll just have to we'll just have to do the drill. We wait for next week and watch episode 13. In the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. Mukhang interesante yung mundo ito na pasok nila ngayon. It's a world wherein two warring twins are involved. Si Sue at si Seiji. Ang pinagmula ng away na to ay isang buhok lang. I know how these kids pass the time, alright? But these twins had a contest over who has the number of scalp hair, obviously. Nagbilangan. Si Seiji ang nanalo by one strand. <laughs> so, doon nagsimula away na to. According to um, one of uh, Seiji's friends, this has been going on for thousands of years. E magkakasabay lang naman sila. So, and Seiji come from Team Aki. Okay, yung kulto ni Aki. Yup, that same... That same group, I now call them Kulto ni Aki. We can now assume that for thousands of years, Aki has been instigating this um, this rivalry between the twins. So, as the episode progressed, Nozomi's self-worth has been questioned again, but this time by Asakase. Gagong si Asakase rito eh. So, well, sinabihan lang siya ni Nagara. That's not for you to decide, Asakase. Ooh. Looks like Nagara's balls are that big now. Mm. Starting to assert himself. I like it. There's something revolving around Mizuho's three cats. Ang talaga powerful ni Mizuho itong... Yun, nakita natin mga kahon-kahon na parang mala Amazon na kahon. Na nakalagay ni Amazon. That's her power. Ito ba lang ni Amazon? Nagkasuspecha pala nung araw si Raj Dani rito na hindi talaga power ni Mizuho ito. It's the power of her three cats. Na-confirm ito nung minsan ni Lie Detector Test ni, ni Raj Dani. Believe it or not guys, he put these three cats under a Lie Detector Test. Na doon niya nalaman na uh, kanila pala ang power sa to. And they have the ability to copy anything. Ang naging confirmation nito, yung kaisa isang game na inimbento ni Rajdani. Only one was sold at that time. E nakita niya, dalawang kopya na. Doon na confirm, again, ni, ni Rajdani, that Nyamazon is not exactly Mizuho's power, but the power of her three cats. Kaya pala sila, nakakapag-order ng cellphone, ng um, pagkain, now, any essentials 
Basta, isusulat lang ni Mizu ko sa isang parang parang job order na detachable na gano'n. Ano pa eh, may, parang, parang triplicate pa nga eh. Ibibigay niya doon sa isang pusa niya at sila nang bahala ano, kumuha. Yun pala, yun pala ang power ng tatlong pusang yun. Kukopya nila kung ano ang nandun sa job order na yun. Wala! Orders here. Ngayon, nagkasuspecha rin si Yamabiko. Well, when there are no humans around, these cats can talk. Nagsasalita ang mga pusang ito. Basta walang, walang tao sa paligid. So, kinausap sila ni Yamabiko. Yun pala, uh, nabisto ni Yamabiko na they are, well, they're basically keeping Mizuho here. Something to that effect. Dahil, they still see Mizuho as a child. Eh, 16 years old eh, bata pa ba yan? Hindi na. Dalaga na yun eh. As the episode progressed, so, and Seiji eventually came to their final duel. Well, again, through Aki's instigations, binigan ni ni So, ah, binigyan niya si So ng isang parang laser gun na toy. Akala nga ni Seiji, laruan lang eh. Binari siya rito, butas ang katawan niya. Pero, he also has that gun kasi binigyan siya ng kopya ng baril na yon ni, ni So. Para, yeah, to be fair, as in, as in, uh, a 17th century duel. Diba, nakatalik, na, magkatalikod pare ko. Then, on... Uh, on signal, bigla silang aharap, doon sila babaril. Nagkabarilan. And eventually, well, again, due to Aki's instigations, Su kills himself with that same gun. Eh, butas din ang ulo niya. But before this, a flashback scene revealed that Su and Seiji are twins. Na deduce kagad kasi ni Aki beforehand na when the great uh, when the great drift happened so was only one person so CG nakalagay dun sa ano niya parang ID document it looks like a passport or something so CG ang pangalan niya while this was going on nakita rin nila nagara yun yung uh, yung passport or identification document ni ni Seiji. So Seiji ang pangalan sa document. During the great drift, so got um, split into two personalities. Kumbaga, naging dalawang tao siya. So inassume na lang lahat na ka- may kaambal siya. But no. During when this when all this weirdness started, na, nag naghiwalay sila into two different people. Odo magkamukha siya, kaya mapagkakamala mong kambal eh. So, ito pala ang nangyari. Final scene. Uh, Nagana niya mabigo berries um, su and where the, um, where the, kumbaga, sacrifice table nila. Kasi may, kasi ang kulto ni Aki, meron silang sacrifice table. They need to sacrifice something for God. Eh, muntik ng... Gawin sacrifice yung isang pusa ni Mizo So, yeah, to the rescue talaga si Mizo And, aba, teka muna. Huwag yung, sabi ni Mizo oy alam ka, ba't yung, yung sasakripisyo yung pusa ko? Buhay pa yan! Oh, buti lang dumating siya. It's a tragic ending. Team Aki just left like like nothing happened. Sinudo pa nila isa nilang kasama. Nakausap sila Mizo Ho. Mm. Let's break this down ARD style. Pace. The pacing that is typical Sunny Boy. Kumbaga, current timeline, flashback, 1 to 2 seconds. Current timeline, flashback, 1 to 2 seconds. The pacing is so impeccable, you would completely understand the episode kahit mag-flashback since na ng, ng ilang beses. At least, it's just... One to two seconds, you will you won't even notice it's there. Kung hindi ka sanay manood ng anime, ha? <laughs> Maganda yung pagkakamix ng current timeline at saka mga flashback sequences. Not just in this episode, but in previous episodes of this anime. Mapagkakamang naman talagang part of the episode. Part of the origin, 
part of this episode's timeline. Ganong ka ganda ang pacing ng episode na to. We got to know Mizo's um, childhood. We got to know um, Aki's previous instigations with with her cult. Nay, nay, wala natin kote siya mas. Talagang kulto, okay? Talagang kulto ang 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 palaka dito sa grupo ng ito. We also saw what Yamabiko's suspicions over these three cats. Inosop niya talaga na masinsinan yung ano yung puti, yung uh, yung munting lang isakripisyo ni Su for God. I felt the road to the finale with the pacing of this episode. Tell you the truth, mga ka-lifestyle. Because of what has um, what has been revealed in this episode. Ang dami. Flow naman. First gear ship was during Mizuho through her cats uh, revealed her childhood. Yung pala, Frustration niya ang ice cream kasi ay siyang pagbigyan ng lola niya. Ay siyang bilhan. So, well, as retaliation, she ate she ate her cat's food. Ganong ka-weird si Mizo nung araw. So, much to the surprise of her grandmother. I called this a gear shift because it proved to us how uh, how controlling her cats are. Mm-hmm. Especially nung nagkaroon sila ng pa- yung, itong power ng Yamazon. Believe it or not, guys. Yamazon is not Mizo's power. It's the power of her cats. So, they were, they have been using this power of theirs to, um, to keep na, to keep Mizo in their, um, around them. Okay. Kumbaga, may, may, let's see, let, we can see na may pagkakling yan, tatlong pusang ito. And, well, they've been, they've been her cats since she was six years old, since she was five or six years old, kasi pinakita sa, ano eh, pinakita sa, sa flashback sequence eh. That's what this gear shift, uh, told, at least told me. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift ito. It shaped Mizo's current, uh, mindset right now. Na assertive siya, that well she's an animal lover kasi pet din niya si Yamabiko eh. second gear shift came when Aki made her first appearance after two episodes yup folks ang leader ng kulto ni Aki ay nagbalik na but for certain flashback appearances dahil her instigations led to uh, led to the twins' deaths Bottom line. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift to. And it, and this gear shift also tells me that, what? Well, the main villainess of this anime is back. And she, she did some, she did some real damage this time. Dahil may, may dalawang namatay. Through this gear shift, I'm now beginning to, um, uh, to, Take Yamabiko's word for it regarding her. Dahil, si, pinagsususpecha kasi ni Yamabiko ito na, na hindi adult ito. More likely, uh, kaedad ito nila Nagara the moment all this weirdness happened. So, right after, naging adult sa bigla. Parang ganun yung, siguro yung, ganun yung conspiracy theory ni Yamabiko rito. And, well... Naniniwala na ako. Final gear ship was of course the um uh the final scene. Bakit? Kasi we can consider this another reality check for Nagara. Kasi siya, sila ni Yamabiko ang nagano eh ang naglibing kay ano yata ang naglibing kay sa totoong uh sa totoong Suosiji. So, kasi yung yung si yung Seiji na nakilala nila nung binal ni ni Suu yun, naging ano naging abo <laughs> naging abo kasi guru ni Nagara that well, even death occurs here in this world kaya siguro we well, we have to prepare parang Ito na, yung, ito na yung daang tatahaki nila. So, 
he'll probably be expecting more debts from now on. So these three gear sheets that I saw, especially the first two, the first two will play or will probably play a role in the final three episodes. In all indications, because <laughs> well, Sunny Boy is one of the weirdest anime we have ever come across. Kaya expect the unexpected. Plot-wise. Malinis. Bakit? Although there were several flashback um, sequences, they are quite negligible. Kasi, pahapyaw lang na tinakil ng episode. Chuck Jones has to justify what is going on in the current timeline. Kaya, yung continuity ng episode na to ay hindi nagambala. The continuity of this episode wasn't disturbed at all. Because we 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 only got to see several quick flashback sequences. Kasi, you know, Sonny Boy, it really knows how to mix flashbacks with the current timeline. Kasi, sa gulo ng mga mundong pinasukan ng mga batang to, you really need to you really need to put yourself up to speed with these flashback moments. Pero sinabi ko rin negligible kasi magigets mo kagad yung kung bakit ganito ang nangyayari sa current timeline through these uh, flashback moments. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot I had a hard time distinguishing the flow and uh, the pace from each other. That's how good this episode is. And I got those roll to the finale feels again. Dahil eto na naman. Anong ano ba namang mundo itong pinasok nila Nagara ngayon? Now, nagparamdam na uli si Aki. Through the uh, through this episode we have come to the conclusion that there are two villains the main protagonists are now uh, probably worried about. War and Aki. Nagparamdam na si Aki dito through her instigations. So, I think they got they, they will have their hands full in the final three episodes. Yun ang hinala ko dito. So, Sunny Boy, episode 9. Deserve. Mm. There was not a sleeper moment in this episode. That's the um, probably the biggest reason why I gave it the two thumbs up. Dahil there was a death in this episode. There was um, revelations that you really didn't quite expect to happen. Like yung yung Nyamazon. Akala natin lahat na, well, ako, ako suspecha ko talaga nun that this, this is Mizuho's power. But no! Ito ang kapangyarihan ng tatlo niyang pusa. We can now conclude that Mizuho doesn't have powers of her own. Pinagsususpecha lang siya parati. Ang talaga may kapangyarihan, itong tatlong pusa niya. <laughs> Lumalabas ngayon that she is the only one in their inner circle that does not have any superpowers. Si Nagara meron. Si Nosomi meron. Si Yamabiko of course meron. Although hindi niya uh, hindi niya magamit ngayon dahil aso siya. Nagform siya ng nagform siya ng aso. And of course uh, their former uh, their former associate Asakasi also has one. Another deep dive folks. Uh, but is but this is the type of deep dive that you will only realize in the uh, on the road to the finale kaya nagka road to the finale feels ako because of this well uh, this deep dive na affirm yung road to the finale feels ko so what happens now in the final three episodes we still don't know mga lifestyle everything's up in the air and we all know how weird an anime sunny boy is kaya madhouse i salute you guys for this one consider me a fan of yours again. <laughs> so again, Sunny Boy Episode 9. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, Maka Lifestyle.
In the tradition of 1941, Fan of Pirate Princess, and Tokyo Revengers, of course, no teasers. <laughs> Talagang, uh, pinanalamig tayo ng Madhouse for the next episode, and they're... Ano pa nga ba? Eh, ang gandang episode na to. So, it's gonna make you want for more. So, let's just do the drill, mga ka-lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. This, uh, this episode starts off with Vanitas and Jean going on a date. Ooh. <laughs> Ngayon, may, may nagmamanman sa anila. Si Domi. Kasi, si Domi pala ang nag-instigate ng date na to. Kasi sinagest niya kay, kay um, Jean na amuin si Vanitas because Vanitas hates, basically, hates people who love him. Uh, something to that effect. Uh, edi, sunod naman si Jean kasi noble to eh. Noble si Domi. So, sunod, sunod siya sa plano. Uh, kung saan saan na sin- kung saan saan na sila nagpupunta sa Paris. The inevitable happened. Jean now is in love with Vanitas. Eh, syempre, pinapractice yung sasabihin niya, eh, narinig na ni Vanitas. Oh. Uh, Tuwang-tuwa naman yung lalaki, syempre. A bunch of kids uh, lost uh, lost their play their play ball. Eh, kukunin na sana ni Jean. Eh, yung isa pala, natapilok. So, um, Uh, he, his knee was bleeding. Nakita ni Jean. She suddenly had that thirst for blood. So, um, Vanitas did the right thing there. Uh, sinalaga niya yung kagat ni Jean. Uh, nagpakagat siya talaga. Then, all of a sudden, si Dante at si Domi, ayun, uh, nireskyo nila pareho, yung dalawa. Eh, mukhang, mukhang kukuyugin na rin sila ng mga tao eh. Wow, grabe. So while this was going on, sinundon ni Lord Rotven Sinoy. So they invite, so they went out for for coffee um, to this coffee shop na ni reserved mismo ni, ni Rotven just for the both of them. So in interview ni Rotven si Noy, may, may, may mga bagay-bagay na rin siyang na, nalaman tungkol kay Vanitas. And Noy brought up this um, this mindset of Vanitas that he hates uh, both humans and vampires. Yet, he also hates saving uh, saving either one when he is in trouble. So, uh, kumaga, in Noy's own words, Vanitas is a walking contradiction. So, tinanong siya ngayon ni, ni Rotven, To, to which to which side is he on? Uh, the humans or the vampires? Um, well, magitan pa kaka sagot ni Noy. I'm only concerned with the with saving the people around me and those um, I hold dear. Bigla bigla sinabi ni Rodven, you failed the test. Then he assaults Noy and bites him here. Lumabas na ang pagiging Villain ni Rodman. Right there. So, final scene. Um, kinakalman ni Vanitas si Jean. And, uh, tala- parin ang tanong ni, ni Vanitas kay Jean kung talagang curse bearer na siya. Is there anyone who is preventing you from from telling this to me? Eh, nagkaroon ng mabil- mabilis na flashback sa kay Jean. What? It's obvious who that shadow is. It's Lord Rodvin. That goes to show you how manipulative this son of a bitch is. Mind you guys, it's the road to the finale. Sa episode na lang, matatapos na to. Let's break this episode down ARD style. Talagang medyo... Although it's... um, Although it's a... It's a calm episode. Pero... When it comes to the pace... Pumikap na nung 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 inatake ni Noy si nung inatake ni Rob Benzinoy. 
this is where the pace really picked up through this uh through the pacing we now know that Rodman is the real villain here not charlatan for for all we know Rodman is I think yeah, I think he's also a high-ranking officer in charlatan and he's also the advisor to the vampire queen yung first two-thirds yeah of the episode talagang uh, puro light-hearted moments kasi matutuwa ka kaila kaila Vanitas at Jean eh <laughs> ako natutuwa ako eh okay, medyo medyo kilig din kasi syempre matutuwa si Vanitas kasi ito yung uh, ito yung kinapupusuan niyang girl although she is a vampire pero here's here's another thing the pacing also made me realize Dalawang beses na siyang kinagat ni Jean. Hindi. One, two, tatlo. Twice in this episode. And up to now, he's, he's still not a vampire. He hasn't been turned yet. Ah, ganun. It's probably because of the, um, of the experimentation uh, Monroe uh, did on him. Baka... Ito yung resulta ng experiment. This is my conspiracy theory, mga lifestyle. Siguro, Monroe, uh, Monroe's design for Vanitas is to become immune to, to, to being turned into a vampire. So, kahit ilang beses siyang kagatin, hindi siya magiging vampire. It's probably, this is probably the result of, uh, one of Monroe's experiments on him. If that's the case, I think that's one thing Vanita should be thankful for. Kasi, kahit ilang beses ang kagatin ng vampire, curse bearer man to o hindi, hindi siya magiging vampire. Eh, di, 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 di mga el. Oh. Twice na siyang kinagat ni Jean dito sa leeg, including the one here in this episode. Tapos kinagapas sa rito sa, sa forearm. Kasi sinalagan, sinalag ni ni Vanita siya magiging kagat na sa bata eh. Again, if that's the case, this is probably the only thing Vanitas will be thankful to to Monroe for. Kasi, tatlo beses na siya kinakagat na siya, hindi pa siya nagiging vampire. At, suspected curse bearer si John. Lalo na. Lalo siya dapat maging vampire kasi tatlo be- unang beses pa, pag kinagat ka nito, talaga magiging vampire ka eh. And through the pacing, we now know yeah, again, the pacing has also reaffirmed for us that Rodven is the big bad heel. Not charlatan, pero siya. Because of his high position in the vampire government, because of his connections with charlatan, yan, yung dalawang yan. It already makes him the main villain of this anime. And we all know, the case study of Vanitas is a split core series. Kung maga, season 1 ito, and after, siguro, magpapahinga muna for, magpapahinga muna, ang balik niya next year na. We'll, we'll, we'll deep dive into that further. Flow naman! First gear shift was the opening scene. Bakit? Kasi, hmm, ang ganda ng forma ni Jean, ha? Talagang um, pandate, eh. What does this gear shift tell us? Simple lang, mga ka-lifestyle. John wouldn't go to 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 great lengths just to just to scorn Vanitas. She could have done it uh, on any day. Bakit pumorma pa siya? Is it because of uh, of Domi's instigations? I don't think so. Deep inside, um, may gusto na rin siya kay Vanitas. Because well. Masugid naman liligo eh. <laughs> si Vanitas. So uh, if you're if you're if you're a girl like Jean, eh, talagang talagang bibigay ka. <laughs> That's what this gift ship is telling us. But okay, uh it will have implications basta. So mommy, i-explain natin. Second gear ship was when Rodven uh, invites Noy for coffee. Eh, nakita na lang niya natutulog sa sahig. So Sabi niya, Noy, eh, you must have had a very sweet dream. Could we, uh, could we have some coffee somewhere? Noy can't turn that down because 
high ranking vampire itong si Rodben. Nagtaka nagtanong din siya, bakit um hindi na ba natin hintayin si Vanitas? Rodben knows how self-centered Vanitas is. At napatunay na ni Vanitas yun nung huli, nung huli, huli silang magkita. But this gearship is also telling me that Rodben feels threatened by Vanitas's presence kung uh, kung magkikita sila uli. That, uh, that's the way I see uh, that's the way I see it. This is probably Lord Rodben's mentality now when it comes to Vanitas. He needs to separate Noi from him. And well, I guess he now knows that the book of Vanitas is real. Kasi nakita na rin niya mismo kung paano gamitin ni Vanitas ito. And Vanitas is a human. Pero kayang-kaya niyang gamitin ang book of Vanitas. Well, Vanitas can, can use it on him. Hanapin lang ni Vanitas sa libro kung no true name niya. Hmm. Tapos, <laughs> euthanized ka na. So, that's, that's how scary Vanitas can be. Especially when he has that book in his hand. Lord Rodman is well aware of this now. Kaya, si Noy lang ang inimbita niya. Final gearship, the third one. is of course yung final scene. Nung uh, nag-heart-to-heart talk si Jean at si Vanitas. That was a... Um, If you love vampire animes, you would find that bite scene sexy. <laughs> For me, um, I got mixed emotions. It, yeah, I find it sexy, but it also creeps me out. <laughs> That's it. Uh, we, we got, whether we admit it or not, ganito kamahal ni Vanitas si Jean. Talagang ang sama ng tama niya rito sa vampire na to. So, he is more than willing to... To, to be bitten by her as many times as she seems fit. Ito namang si Jean, may pagka suspension ni Vanitas, curse bearer na to. So, kahit ilang beses siyang kagatin, okay lang. Hanggang sa magsawa siya. But eventually, nagsawa siya talaga sa final scene. And, um, umiiyak na siya. Naintindihan naman siya ni, ano, naintindihan naman siya ni Vanitas. That there is someone who is um, preventing her from divulging the secret, the secret of hers. Eh, nakita naman natin kung sino yung anino eh. It's Rodven. Rodven also has that power to to compel somebody not to talk. He's he's, he's the Vampire Queen's adv- main advisor. So, yeah, he has that leverage. And, I'm seeing it now. He is probably the leader of Charlatan. Mukha sa ganito pupunta ang, ang anime na to. This is what this gearship is telling me. Rodman is a powerful enemy. Kaya, if I were Vanitas, I would count Noi out first. Dahil, who knows what, uh, who knows what Rodman actually did to Noi in this episode. So, talagang dapat mag-ingat na si Vanitas dito. He now has One less ally now. Let's just say na talagang gilawang alipin na ni ni Robin Sinoy. His closest confidant and sidekick is no longer by his side. What does Vanitas have to do? Well, he, he can also rely now on Jean. Pero, there's a complication there. Jean is the bodyguard of Luca. Alam na natin lang na si Luca natural. Chuhin niya si Rodben. So, kakampihan niya kaga dito. No matter what anyone says. So, expect the complications regarding that one. This gearship has made me realize that just now. So, these three gearships, I am very sure, if they don't play a role, if any one of them don't play a role in the finale, They will play a role in season 2. Baka nakakalimutan nyo, mga ka-lifestyle. This is just season 1. Vanitas is a split core series, kaya magkakaroon ng season 2 ito. Y- you can take that to the bank. Plot-wise, malinis. Malinis. I can say that twice. <laughs> Because, it clearly showed 
okay, without batting an eyelash that while Vanitas and John are going out on a date, uh, happy, happy, kasi, syempre, makit, makit ang ligo si Vanitas, eto to namang si John, pakipot, mun, pa, pakipot minsan, syempre, playing Miss Hard to Get. Noy was being brainwashed by Rodven. Basically, why did I call this a clean plot? Kasi, hindi niya dinalas yung pagpalit ng, ng scenery from Vanitas' date to noise potential assault. 140 the episode, focus dito. 140 the episode, focus dito. I couldn't call it, I couldn't call that an ironed out plot kasi very basic ang transition from one scene to another. From one uh, from one side of the episode story to another. Very basic. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. Wala siyang complications dito. Again, the plot is clean. So, pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. And, setting us up for a possible um, either sad or slam bang season 1 finale. Kaya, kaya kailangan tumutok na next week. Magtatapos na ang The Case Study of Vanitas. So, The Case Study of Vanitas, Episode 11. Two times up God. You're probably wondering why I wasn't excited at giving out the, um, giving out the rating. Well, I really need to, uh, to give out my rating as fast as possible. Kasi I know how valuable your time is, mga ka lifestyle. So, I'm going to keep my parting shots as short as possible. And besides, patapos na ito eh. At least season 1. So, do I need to expound? In next week, finale na ng, finale na ng anime na to eh. Kaya, best thing you can do right now, mga ka lifestyle, is to wait for the finale next week. And, and see how it all plays out. Let's all see how this anime will play out for the next season. So again, The Case Study of Vanitas, Episode 11. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, mga ka-lifestyle. So probably for the final time, title of the next episode has been teasered. Hindi lang title of the next episode. Title of the finale has been teasered. Kaya... Let's just wait for next week and watch that one. So in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Kawawang Ryuhi, sa kagustuhan magkaroon ng love life, here he finds, um... But anyway, Meron na papadala ng love letter kay Ryuhei, iniiwan sa locker niya. So, what? Akala, akala talaga ni Ryuhei, babae. Sa wakas, magkaka-girlfriend na siya. So, um, in-invite siya na makipag-meet dito sa isang lugar. So, punta siya. Inihintay niya. Ang naglalagay pala ng mga love letter, letters na to, yung isang member ng club nilang track club, <laughs> si Nozaki. Lalaki! <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, I've seen it all. But I never thought this would be um that a superhero anime such as this would have a um would would tackle boys love. <laughs> eh, so okay, so yeah he said some he said some um improper things na na, na uh, biglang nung kinwento niya kila Rena biglang Rena snaps and talagang pilitsarahan siya. Sin- sinabihan, sinabihan siya na, bumalik ka doon at mag-sorry ka. Sabihin mo, wala kang gusto sa kanya. So, he did. And this... Well... Let's just say Nozaki got heartbroken. So, while they were... Well, uh, while they were on a mission, may sumulubong sa kanya si Murase. Um, ito talaga yung best friend ni Ryuhei. So, tinanong siya, oi 
saan kayo pupunta? Ne, mi nawala kasi na cellphone to, so eh, gumawa na sila ng kwento para hindi malaman ito. After um, checking it out and finding out it was a dead lead, the camera now pans to Nosaki. Um, just sitting in on the high staircase. Then may lumapit sa kanyang parang shrouded figure. Binigyan siya ng dalawang somnium drops. Ako. Mukhang magiging dream. Uh, y- yun nga nangyari. Naging dreamer si Nosaki. So, natural. Pupunta mga nakakarap sa kanya. So, uh, well, Ryuwei instantly recognizes him. It's Nosaki. So, sa, so sabi nila Renat Eri, Ito ba yung nagpapadala sa inyo ng love letter nun? Ah, uh, Naku, patay. So, So, habang inasikaso na yung, yung Desarya na tinawag ni Nosaki, kinulong ng Desarya silang dalawa ni Ryuhei. Uh, talagang kinulong sila. So, uh, tinatunan ni Ryuhei, ba, ba mo ginagawa ito? So, hindi tama ito. So, talagang Ryuhei was actually convincing him not to go through this anymore. The moment na napuruhan ni Eri sa likod yung Desarya, bumitaw na yung yung kulungan nila. So, Ryuwei, it was Ryuwei's turn now to go all out on this disarya. Ang, ang umasikaso naman kay Nosaki, yung dalawang mabae. So, sinabi, sinabi lang ni Rena, using, uh, using your love to hurt others is wrong. It is not right. Kaya, eh, sinabi ni, ano, ni Ryuwei, tama siya. Better step out of this dream right now. So yun ngang sinabi ni yun ngang ginawa ni Nosaki at yun na natalo niya si Saria. Consider this a win for the Knocker Ups. Kasi hindi lumabas yung Margarito kay ano kay Nosaki. But before Nosaki passed out, tinanong ni Ryu kay kung sino na bigay sa kanya ng drops na yun. He only mentioned one name, Murase. Final scene. Out of his rage, hinanap, well, pinuntahan ka agad ni Ryuhei kung saan, siguro kung saan nakatira si Murase at haharapin niya. The shrouded figure suddenly blocks his way, at yun, sinu- nung sinugod niya, pinatulog siyang ganun. So we now know that Murase is part of the church. Mukhang, mukhang malapit na matapos ang anime na to. Kasi right now, We have no idea when this anime will end. Walang binibigay na news. Okay, so, I'm getting that feeling that we are already on the road to this fin- to this anime's finale. But, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Well, first half of the episode was, uh, I felt, it felt kind of funny. <laughs> Kasi, dito nakita yung pag... Yung pagiging desperado sa pag-ibig ni Ryuhei. Okay. Kasi, kasi ang tingin sa sarili niya talaga, talagang guwapo siya eh. At saka, yun nga lang, matangkad siya. And he, he, he's into kick, he's a kickboxer. So, talagang, talagang, bilid, talagang sobrang bilid niya sa sarili niya. Pero, nagtataka siya kung bakit wala siyang love life. <laughs> Basically, Rena summed it up in one word. Idiot! The pacing will make you realize that. The pacing was this good kasi. Right. It shows us that well, they, they may be superheroes. They may be the knocker-ups. But they also have regular teenage lives. Ayun nga. Mm. Akala to... <laughs> ah, akala ni Ryuwei talaga babae. Ni hindi man lang siya nagtaka kung kanino yung kan- nagagana yung mga letter. At bakit hindi... Um, handwritten yung mga letters. Kumbaga, kumbaga, kumbaga pinadaan sa computer, pin, pinrint. Hindi pa na siya nagtaka. So, this goes, this, the pacing will also tell you that this is much of a buffoon <laughs> Ryu is. Well, but we love the guy, alright? He is one of the, um, one of, uh, probably the most all-out knocker up right now. Yeah. Wow, the pacing will will really make you laugh at the uh, at the at the situation Ryuhei got himself into. But in the second half of the episode, 
That's when it became really serious. Dahil nakialam na ang church. Binigyan si Nosa akin ng sonium drops. O yan, para matupad yung mga pangarap mo, inumin mo yung dalawang yan. Ininom naman. Naging dreamer. Nagkaroon ng disarya sa Tromere. So, nakalerto ka agad ang mga knocker up. Even Ryuhi. This is where it got even dark during the final scene. So, the pacing may, will make you realize that. That uh, this anime has got as suddenly uh, suddenly took a dark turn in this episode. Flow naman. First gear shift was the opening scene. Bakit? Kasi, well, you would you would feel happy for initially you would feel happy for the UA kasi wala pa siyang girlfriend. Siguro virgin pa siya. <laughs> oh, he's got fan mail. Is he that is he that popular now in school? Ba? Ah, uh, parang para feeling talaga ni Ryuhi. Eh. Uy! Uh, campus celebrity na ako. May love letter. Mayroong love letter sa locker ko. Gago! <laughs> Yung pala, kapa niya lalaki may gusto sa kanya. <laughs> And this gear shift will make you realize that, okay? This gear shift confirms how much of a buffoon Ryuhi is. How dense he is at relationships. Second gear ship nung uh, sinabi na yan totoo kay Inosaki na he, he's not into guys and he can't possibly fall in love with, a, with another guy. So, talaga, talaga, talagang lalaki siya. Okay? Straight, straight guy siya talaga. And this broke Inosaki's heart. Bakit ko tinawag na gear ship? Isn't it obvious? This is where the episode took a dark turn. Go figure. Final gear ship was when Nosaki spilled the beans before passing out. If that's not a gear ship to you, I don't know what is. Well, siyempre, sa galit ni... Well, talaga umilit ang ulo ni Ryuhi. Ang, binag, ang binagsak na pangalan ni, ni Nosaki, best friend pa niya, si Murase. So, Morase has been involved with the church probably longer than he than the time he met Ryuhei. Or pinadala siya ng church para para subaybayan si Ryuhei. Deep dive. See? That is the, that's that's also the reason why I uh, why I classified this scene as a gear ship. It's all, it's all coming together now. So, we can now assume that Murase is the one distributing all these Somnium drops all over Shibuya at least. Ang ina, kala mo, kung pumorma tsaka kung umasa sa school, kala mo model student, yung pala, tang ina mo, kalaban ka pala eh. Uh, ikaw pala, ikaw pala ang pusher ng kalaban eh. I can't wait what's going to happen in the next episode. After... Uh, siguro after Ryuhei comes to, he will be one pissed off knocker up. So, these three gear shifts I saw, if we're not in the road to the finale yet, good. Because, um, the final gear shift will play a role in future episodes. Okay. So, plot-wise, Malinis. Napega ko yun. <laughs> Do you need a backstory or a or a or a flashback sequence for this kind of a story in an episode? Are you that dense? <laughs> Sanji Jen is trying to well, tell us through the plot of this episode that yun nga, They they may be superheroes, but they also have regular lives to lead. Ayun nga. Relationship problems because they are teenagers. So, yun. Ini encounter din ng mga knocker up. Especially si Ryuwe. <laughs> ah, excuse me. Hi, oh, wait. You need to have a, a plot as clean as this para may express mo sa mga viewers that uh, that 
even superheroes have regular lives. Even, 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 even well, they are teenagers after all, so they got, they got their lives ahead of them. While they have their lives ahead of them, they are kicking ass. They are kicking the church's ass. Talagang mahirap ang buhay ng isang knocker up. <laughs> uh, if there's anything this prop wants to tell you, it's that. Because it's that clean. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And another life lesson. Don't get into a relate don't get into a relationship right away. If someone uh if someone hits on you whether it be uh in your face or through letters check them out muna. All right. Wag mo nang wag mo na magpaligaw sa manliligaw hangga't hindi mo nalalaman kung anong klasing tao 'yun. I know. I- I've been, I've been through relationships before. <laughs> so, B-Side Tomary, the animation, episode 10. Deserve. Mm. Thumbs up. Let's talk about uh, the possibilities of this anime ending early. Because, uh, I don't know about you, Kalaisa, because well, I haven't uh, seen any news on when uh, this anime's uh, this anime's airing will stop. Because uh, some say it's only twelve episodes. Some well, some anime database list list only twelve episodes. So what about the We really need to know because once we know how many episodes this anime will actually run, what well, what we can now determine. The roster for next season. You get me, mga lifestyle. As much as possible, I really want to know how many episodes an anime, a thing, uh, a particular anime will run, so that I can prepare myself for next, the, for the next roster next season. Mas madali kasi kung ganun. Eh, kaysa naman, the animators will uh, will keep you hanging in the air. As to how many episodes this anime will actually run, eh, well, you're just waiting. Para talaga naka, talaga naka, nakasabit ka sa ere. Eh. Uh, it's counterproductive. That's all I can say. Not telling uh, the public as to how many episodes this anime will run, it's counterproductive. But I am hoping uh, Sanji Jin will come out with a statement that uh, what well, that this anime is going to run for this many episodes sana but we'll, we'll continue to dig into things don't worry mga kalaista uh, your um, your your main man is on it so again Decide Dromedy the Animation episode 10 two thumbs up another two thumbs up for this great anime So that's real, eh? So next episode has been teasered. Oi! Hong continuation to ah, but I don't want to trust it muna. And um something's going to happen to Ryu Hey. Nah, di ko muna paniniwalaan. We'll just have to do the drill, mga lifestyle for that episode. We will wait for next week and watch that one. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Sort of a transition episode. Explain ko. We start off where episode 22 left off. So, nagkapatawaran na sila Mikey at Kasutora. Now, <laughs> Draken invites Takemichi over to his place, which is actually a brothel. <laughs> Putahan. We all know Draken's backstory. Kasi he was raised in a brothel. So, hanggang ngayon, dito pa siya nakatira. He had Takemichi drop by and one of their one of their hoes actually mistook Takemichi for a customer. Eh, buti na lang to the rescue si Draken. Sinabi niya dito sa sa isang babae nila 
Kung naman, ti, isikita mo lang mabuti mga customer mo. <laughs> so, well, in English, he said, do a better job in screening your customers. <laughs> Sabi niya, uh, so, well, eventually, Draken uh, shows Takemichi his room. So, yun na. Nakita ni Takemichi yung mga photos ng, well, photos ng Toman. He actually saw this photo of um, Draken and Baji. Silang dalawa lang. So, sabi ni Takemi, ni, ni Draken, gusto ko na nga rin patingin si Kasutora nun eh. But, I know it's wrong. Sabi niya ganun. Nagpasalamat siya kay Takemichi for stopping Mikey. Kasi, inamin niya nun na he couldn't stop Mikey himself at that time. So, Bonus points kay Takemichi yun. Kasi, kung hindi napigil na ni Takemichi si Mikey, eh, eh, malamang magkakatotoo na yung future na... Yung future na nadatnan niya. Eh, another funny moment uh, came onto the scene. Nakita niya kasi si Emma at si Mikey magkasama. Not only was he following... Ano, but he wasn't the only one following the two. Kahit si Hina at si Naoto. <laughs> Sumama rin sa, maki- sa pagmamanman. So, okay. Akala nila nagtututiming si Emma between Mikey and Draken. Dumating bigla si Draken. So, akala na ako magkakasago pa ito. Well, well, that, 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 that fantasy scene looked like the apocalypse. <laughs> eh, nadatnan din ni Draken si Hina kasi kinumpronta na ni Hina sila Mikey at Emma eh, in that scene. Eh, sabi ni Draken, Ha? Hindi mo ba alam? Mag... Magkapatid sama yung dalawang yan? They both have the same father, but they have different mothers. Ha? <laughs> sabi, nag- ang gawa, si Takemichi, bumabaha na ang luha niya. <laughs> That's it. He's already praying to the high heavens for, for what's going to happen eh. Eh, narinig din niya yun. Ha? So, half-sister pala ni Mikey si Emma. So, isa tatay nila. Eh, birthday pala ngayon ni Emma. So, tinreat yata ni Mikey. Eh, syempre, ang bunso niyang kapatid. Sa... For, for some parfait. Yan. Ngayon naman, si Drake naman, irigaluan niya ng pink na teddy bear si Emma. Nilagay pa sa ulo rito eh. Eh, napansin ni Mikey. Sabi niya, Teka, Draken, isn't that the one you wanted to win at the arcade? So, kinonfirm ni Draken, yun nga. Para pala kay Emma yun. Kasi, well, we all know kasi na umakit ng ligaw si Draken kay Emma. So, na- natawa rin si Draken. <laughs> hindi, hindi alam nila, takay ni Chet ni Hina, na magkapatid sila Mike at Emma. <laughs> Grabe, that, that was a funny scene. That was a funny scene. After that, Hina and Takimichi went on a date themselves. So, eh, siguro, naingit yung babae. Oh, sige, date na rin tayo. <laughs> now, before that, um, Draken told Takimichi to attend the next Toman gathering. Kasi, may, meron daw importante sasabihin sa kanya si Mikey at that time. So, uh, well, the time came. Gathering na ng Toman. Pero before that, pinapunta, pinapunta ni Mitsuya si Takemichi doon sa school nila. So, sinaman, sinamakan ni, sinamakan muna ni Pe. Eh, si Pe pala tsaka si Mitsuya, they come from the same junior high school. So, eh, doon pala nalaman ni Takemichi that Mitsuya is the president of that school's sewing club. Kaya pala, kaya pala ang galing, ang galing manahi eh. Tandaan nyo guys, Mitsuya was the one who designed the Toman jackets. Kaya pala pinapunta ni Mitsuya doon si Takinichi because he wanted to give Takinichi his own Toman jacket na siya mismo ang gumawa. So, ayun na. Yeah, ginagawa na. Oh, patapos na. Kasi, he really wanted to thank Takinichi for for saving Draken at the Battle of August 3rd, you know all that. 
Yung Toman versus Mobius. Yep. And of course, for opening everybody's eyes at the Blood Halloween. Kumbaga eh. Um, well, kahit bugbog sarado na si Takibichi, he, he continues to throw punches at Valhalla. So, you remember that scene? Where uh, nakita siya ng mga, mga bagsak ng Toman na... He still kept on swinging kahit bugbog sarado na talagang his face is a bloody mess. So so talagang na motivate ang mga ang mga toma na lumaban pa uli. So Mitsuyo so wanted to thank him for that. And what ganda. At the gathering, ayun, suot-suot na ni Takemichi yung yung toma jacket niya. Winelcam na siya officially ni Draken. Final scene. Ayun. Nagpakita na sa meeting si Mikey, of course. Kasama si um si Matsuno and to everybody's surprise si Hanma still wearing that Valhalla jacket. So, ano to? So, yung mga ibang toman nagtaka kahit si Takemichi nagtaka rin. So, sinabi lang ni Draken Things are going to get messy tonight. <laughs> so that. Uh, wow, I was stumped. Bakit? Bakit? Bakit pinaflank ngayon si Mikey ng ng commander ng Valhalla? Sinabi ni Draken dito that things are going to the Blood Halloween is going to formally end tonight. Something to that effect. <laughs> Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. It went slice of life for for the first two thirds of the episode. First two thirds of the episode. Uh, it went slice of life. Chaka, it kicked kicked off with the op- opening scene, the final scene ng uh, ng episode twenty two. Nagkapatawa na sila Kasotora at Mikey. Pinabot lang kasi ni Mikey through Draken yung message niya for Kasotora. Kasi, dinalo ni Mikey yung puntod ni Baji. Then, of course, you know, that funny scene we're in, um, Hina and Takemichi mistook Mikey and Emma as ganon. <laughs> that was funny. Tapos, um, uh, Dragon steps in to, to shoot them down with the facts. <laughs> that was funny. Then, of course, yung uh, nagpakita ng dubos sa pasasalamat si Mitsuya to Takinichi for for practically saving Toman twice. Okay, during the Battle of August 3rd, of course, um, nirescue niya si Draken kasi di ba kasi naksak si Draken. And, of course, the Blood Halloween for 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 motivating all of Toman to keep uh, to keep swinging uh, eventually yun nanalo Toman they were outnumbered remember they were outnumbered by Valhalla at least 2 to 1 <laughs> what a way to to thank someone for a Toman jacket total ano ne uh, talagang sinalin na siya sa Toman eh so bigyan na siya ng jacket pero this one is very special kasi si Mitsuya mismo ang gumawa. The only time Mitsuya um, made jackets for Toman is for the founding members. Silang anim lang. That was the only time. So, sabi nga ni, sabi nga ni Pe, you should be thankful kasi he hasn't done jackets since the OG members. Yeah. Ayan, at saka nung ayan nga, nung final third ng episode, Medyo everybody start everyone everyone who was there started whispering his name. Uy, si Takemichi na ba kaya na? Yan yung ano, ano. Sikat. <laughs> Sikat na si Takemichi sa Toman. And tapos taka he, he's already sporting that Toman jacket. Yeah, talagang wow. Ay siguro ni Takemichi. Wow, sikat ako. <laughs> sikat ako sa Toman. But anyway, that's probably not not the uh, not the thing on his mind right now. Kasi, this is what the pacing will also tell you. Takimichi's mindset right now is, ano kaya ang, ano 
Malaki ang message para sa akin ni Mikey, but gusto pa niyang dito sabihin. So, ano, ano din ang sinasabi ni Draken na maghanda ako for this gathering? So, I think he's getting a hint na. Kasi, Mikey walked into the gathering with uh, Matsuno and Hanma flanking him. So, mukhang, nagka, mukhang nagkakaroon ng hinala si Takemichi kung ano ang sasabihin ni Mikey dito. So, that's what the pacing will make you realize. Okay na okay ang pacing sa ganito. Kasi, well, it's a great setup for the finale. Flow naman! First gear shift was when Takemichi went to Mitsuya's High School dahil pinapunta siya doon. Why did I call us a gear shift? Simple lang. Because we now see here that Takemichi is, is uh, well, has been formally accepted into Toman right there. Hindi doon sa gathering. The moment na binigay ni Mitsuya yung jacket na siya mismo ang gumawa. Because what he did in the Battle of August 3rd and now the Blood Halloween baka dun pa lang matunog na ang pangalang Takemichi Hanagaki sa uh, from within Toman you now see this wimp <laughs> joining Toman because if it weren't for if it weren't for his big balls <laughs> Toman wouldn't exist right now you get me mga ka lifestyle kaya that's why I called it a gear shift. Final gear shift was the gathering itself. In all indications from this gear shift, we are probably looking at a um like Draken said, a very messy gathering. Or in our case, a messy finale. All throughout this episode. Maghanda ka Takemichi for the gathering. Ngayon. That you're, well, that you're officially a part of Toman. Takemichi followed Dragon's, uh, uh, Dragon's request. So, sige. Randa ako. Another reason why I called this a gear shift is because parang indication to for another season for Tokyo Revengers, ah. <laughs> Kasi! Okay. Let's assume na uh, Valhalla is now under Toman. Not, uh, not when, not during, not yung uh, kinwento ni Draken no na Toman is now under Valhalla. So, kung ganun nga mangyari, what will now happen to Kisaki? But the way I see it here, mukhang Mukhang nilaglag na ni Hanma si Kisaki dito. Kasi, he is flanking Mikey now. And he's still wearing that Valhalla jacket. So, what does this mean? Mukhang, by the way, um, Mikey is being flanked. Kasi, uh, there was Mitsuya and Mitsuya. Si Matsuno on his right and on his left, si Hanma. For me, this... Gearship is telling me that Valhalla is now under Toman. Valhalla is now under Toman. Ganun yan. It's uh it's no long, it's now the other way around. Hindi na yung uh hindi na yung according to uh Takemichi's timeline of origin na na under no, mula nung Blood Halloween na under ang Toman sa Valhalla. Kaya yun yung yun yung yun yung Toman na nadat na ni Takemichi dito sa uh, doon sa kwento ni 2017 Draken. This gearship is telling me that. So, these two gearships that I saw definitely will play a role in the finale. Nama sabi ko. <laughs> Plot wise, malinis. Again. Bakit? What? It carried over from the previous episode. Kasi hindi mo naman hindi ka naman dapat mag-ano eh, 
mag, mag iron out ng isang panibagong plot if you're carrying the story over from from the most previous episode na malinis naman ang plot it won't make sense kumaga yung momentum ng previous episode gusto mong i-carry over ngayon sa episode na to and the only way to do that is to maintain the clean plot kung ano yung kung gaano kalinis yung plot na ginawa mo in that episode kailangan ganun din dito kasi ikinabit mo doon sa previous episode yung istorya ngayon does that make sense mga ka-lifestyle? pace, flow, and plot I almost did not tell one from the other what a setup for the finale next week I cannot wait so Tokyo Revengers episode 23 mmm two thumbs up Ooh. I'm trying to keep my parting shots as short as possible dahil patapos na ang mga animes ng, ng roster natin ito so there's no point in me there's no point for me to, uh, to expound on a particular episode especially kung final 3 episodes na final 2 episodes nope I will just let the next episode um, talk it out for me. Kaya, hanggang dito na lang. See you guys at the finale. So again, Tokyo Revengers episode 23. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. So in the tradition of Fena Pirate Princess, Sunny Boy, and Night Nighthead 2041, No teasers! Ano pa nga ba? Ba't mo ititisar ang finale? Hello! Hindi <laughs> mo nakatinisar yung previous 23 episodes eh. Ngayon pa sa finale. Yeah? Where's the logic in that? Kaya, let's wait for next week and watch the finale. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Sabi ko sa inyo eh, anak mayaman si Luke. He is um he is part of the Camillo family, the premier family when it comes to um uh, when it comes to gear making. Talagang worldwide conglomerate ang ang Camillo Gears Corporation. King Sevens through Tiger uh, have already met the uh, the patriarch of the Camillo family and the head of this company. Basta si si Grandpa Camillo. Ito ang lelong nila Tiger at Luke. Sinabi niya talaga, it's unmistakable. He is a member of the Camillo family. Kasi, ang pinalalabas kasi ngayon ni Luke na he is one of the uh, one of the six Goa siblings. Talagang been rainwashed na siya ni Yu eh. And this pissed Tiger off. So, hinamon ka agad ni Tiger sa isang duelo. During the first half of the duel, talagang talagang binabasura siya ni Tiger. Then, it goes to his usual game style. So, uh, labas na Drago, labas si Dragia. Kinontrahan siya. Then, during, um, uh, during Tiger's turn, ayun na, tatapusin na talaga ni Tiger si Luke. Until, boom! The Luke man rises again. <laughs> I don't know if you can call this a fan service moment, pero, basta explain ko na mamaya. So, As the look man, he suddenly turned things around. Nasa labas na si Dragas, di ba? He now draws um, the dragon, which is his primary fusion material for Dragas Star F. So, ayun. Kinasa na niya ang fusion. Nang fusion summon, nilabas si Gra- Dragas Star F. He was able to beat Tiger. And uh, after his victory, you will take him away like a puppet. If you've seen the episode, um, You could see the look of concern now on Yuga's face. Magkatapos, pag, matapos talunin ni Luke yung kanya sariling ate. Who is a really strong duelist in her right. In her own right. So, final scene. Well, we just saw Yuga asking a favor to Yuro. So, ano kaya ito? Ba't kaya hihingi ng tulong dito si Yuga? What's his... Um, Yeah, what's his plan? Ano kaya plan? Ngumiti pa eh. Ngumiti pa. So, right now, everything is up in the air. But, it, 
Uh, this episode gave us another great duel. This time between siblings. Grabe. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. The first two thirds of the episode. Fast paced. Kasi, uh, you know, you know how Tiger's demeanor is. Talagang, she's absolutely pissed off at her brother right now. Dahil, um, sinasabi kasi ng kapatid niya na, uh, he's one of the six Goha siblings. Eh, syempre, bilang panganay na kapatid, talagang, talagang mabibuisit ka. Eh, kayo doon naman ang anang tagapagmana ng, ng isang malaking korporasyon. A company bigger than Goha. Tapos, aasa ka ng ganito. Whether you're brainwashed or not. Ba? Then came the final third of the episode. So, medyo nag-slow down kasi, well, we, we, we needed to totally get an, to, to get an idea of why Yuga is now asking you Euro for help. Yung panganay. Yung panganay na Goha. What's the deal here, Yuga? Ano plano mo? So, it will make you ask that question. The pacing will make you ask that question. Kaya, yung pacing ng episode, natural. First two-thirds of the episode, at least. Mabilis. Because, you know, it treated us to a really nice duel. Talagang ang ganda ng duel to. And you know, uh, that if there's uh, an intense duel scene, the pace will pick up. Ayun na nangyari. Okay lang. Okay, basic. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift here was when Luke uh, returned to their... returned to the family mansion. At ang babaw ng rason. He wants some new underwear. Sinalubong siya ng ate niya. At ito ang naging rason niya. This pissed Tiger off even more. Guys, siguro ni Tiger, bubalik ka lang sa mga makakin natin para lamang kumuha ng... Kumo na malilinis ta brief mo. Tangina wali nga magduelo tayo. <laughs> okay, well, you know you we all we all know how Tiger's demeanor is when it comes to her younger brother. So talagang through this gear shift she has a point. Kasi kaya lang tin, kaya lang natalo ni Luke ang kanyang ate because he suddenly turned into the Luke man. Just like Yugi Moto when he turns into Atem the duel suddenly turns into his favor. He, uh, kumaga, guaranteed win na. Parang ganun, yun nangyari dito. So, that's what this gear shift is telling me. Second gear shift was when Luke turned again into the Luke man. Why did I call this a gear shift? It's some sort of a fan service moment for me. Kasi, it took me back to the days of duel monsters when, um, Every time Yugi Moto is in a pinch in a duel, uh, magre-request na si Atin na lumabas. So pagbibigyan ni ni Yugi, ni Yugi labas sa si Atin. So all he needs to do is survey the current situation. He now knows how to beat the opponent. That's why kaya nga Yugi yo ang title ng anime. Atem has proven time and again that he is the king of games. No matter what game it is. Pero, siyempre, dual monsters. Yeah. It's the card game that, uh, that up to now is, uh, is still endeared to my heart for, 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 for some personal reasons. But, enough of that. <laughs> so, ganun lang ano eh. It's a fan service moment. Sort of. Really takes you back to the days of dual monsters when Yugi would change into Atem. Um, most of the time, um, during most of the time when he is in, uh, talagang nalagay na sa sa alanganin sa isang duelo. When when the opponent has him back to a corner. Yeah, dyan, dyan, dyan niya tatawagin si ano? Dyan niya tatawagin si Atem. Now you can also. Uh, you should you can also throw back to something more recent. Zexal. Siyempre, kapag uh, medyo alanganin na si Yuma, kukonsultay, kukonsultahin niya si Astral for further strategies. So, eventually, they work out a winning strategy. They beat the opponent. Ganon dito. Y- yun, ang, uh, yun ang dating sa akin ng gear shift na to. Pero, I don't think 
Luke proved Luke proved anything here. Dahil he turned into the Luke man. He did not beat his his older sister as himself. Mas okay ba ngayon yung duel niya against uh, Roa last time? Talagang talagang on his on his own power tinalo niya si Roa. Dito, no, he wasn't able to do that. He I don't know if it's deliberate or not, pero he just turned into the Luke man. At the moment his his sister was already dealing the uh, dealing the winning blow. So, yeah, you know, you know it did deliver sa inyo ng gear shift na yan. That's why I called it the gear shift. Final gear shift was um uh, after after the Luke man beat Tiger. So, yung the camera showing uh, the look of concern on Yuga's face talagang Dap- dapatingin na lang siya sa lupa thinking of um what what everyone should do uh on how Luke should be dealt with on how you should be dealt with you can call that a gear shift because the main protag is now uh thinking of a strategy on how to how to totally bypass fusion or something to that effect or just to uh, just to derail Yuo's plans of completely destroying Rush Duels. Kanya siguro, kanya siguro ni Yuga, you're gonna destroy the format that I worked so hard to invent over my dead body. <laughs> so, you know, he is the main protag. He, he's, gonna, he's gonna figure something out. So that's what this gear shift is telling us. Non-factor si Yuga for at least two and a half episodes. Yeah, he's been silent. Probably in the next episode, he will do something. He's going to, um, he's going to set a plan into motion. So these three gear sh- these these three gear shifts I saw, especially the last one, definitely will play a role at least in the next episode. Plot wise, mm, Malinis. Typical Yu-Gi-Oh! Malinis na plot. I'll explain. Kasi, there, there were funny moments. Um, while um, the, the patriarch of the Kamiju family was explaining on how, uh, why gears are so wonderful, why they are helping the world economy, on what, and Luke would, would have none of that. His plain reaction, talaga, matatawa ka talaga. Hindi mo, hindi mo nila lang kung matatawa ko maiinis ka. Because in the opening scene, um, he saw this wall, wall, this wallpaper on Yuo's room na puro gears. So, bigla siyang, bigla siyang nagwala. So, ma, ma, okay. So, yeah, I can laugh to that. <laughs> Kasi sinisira niya yung kwarta ng kontrabide. So, it, it's quite a satisfying moment. Right? It's both funny and satisfying. Pero, um, while he was explaining, while his great-grandfather was explaining the value of their of their business, of their family legacy to the world, eh, he would have none of that. Tiger has every reason to, to be pissed off at Luke right now. Kasi, Luke is totally downplaying their family's legacy. So, it doesn't feel right. You gotta have a plot this clean to make to 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 figure this one out to make you uh, to make you go into deep dive mode. Ayun nga, deep dive natin ngayon. Remind you, there was a there was an intense duel scene here and the plot was this clean. Ganun aganda ang episode na to, ibig sabihin. <laughs> so, pace, flow and plot they all came together for this episode. The Studio Bridge has given us another great episode from this anime. Kasi for the last two episodes, hanggang one thumb up lang yung naibigay natin because there was a certain blandness to it, especially during the duel scene between uh, Roa and Luke. Parang ano eh, hindi pa ako content of that. Here, yup. Kasi the duel scene here gave me a fan service, uh, gave me those fan service feels. Talagang naalala ko yung the time of dual monsters when Yugi would just turn into Atem when he's down, when he's uh, 
when when he's down in life points when he's about to lose yan really talagang na throw back ako nung nung sandaling yun so Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 64 deserve nyo ngayon two thumbs up I only wish that Luke would snap out of this this brainwashing you was done to him kasi hindi naman siya talaga go a sibling eh I don't know if he uh, if he's that if he's that dumb or if he's that uh, desperate to 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 be relieved of the family legacy to be exempted from the family legacy I think he's just looking for a way to yeah, to, to make it on his own but come on not this way look to 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 pose as the sixth go sibling have you stooped that low you tell me mga kalaysa has Luke stooped that low para nakawala na siya sa family legacy sa legacy ng family nila comment below I uh, really want to know your thoughts let's just wait for the next episode so again Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 64 Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up from this Yu-Gi-Oh! series Mga Lifestyle Finally, after two episodes Next episode has been teasered And What's good on? All, all of them are involved na Including Asana and Neil? But, ano kinalaman ni Neil dito? But <laughs> uh, I don't wanna trust it yet Right? You know me Mga Lifestyle So We'll just have to do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Able specific orders pala were to, uh, were to uh, deliver Fena unharmed to him. You know, utos niya kila kila umali pero may sugat dito tapos may uh, umaga what's called this yung markang iniwan ng ano yung ginamit na lupid para itali siya so uh, how unfortunate for umali she didn't get paid <laughs> well in retaliation umali just assaults Fena in one scene at uh, tinanong niya kung bakit kung bakit ah, nasa kanya yung yung heart-shaped necklace na binigay niya kay Abel. So, mukhang itataka siya si Fena. Well, Abel meets her with uh, with the entire, with her, with, it, with his whole ship's brigade. And if she didn't let go of Fena in three seconds, paula niya siya ng bala. Now, she relented. Ayun. Uh, Fena was saved. Pero, pinalayas na siya ni pinalayas na ni Abel si O'Malley being the pirate queen Grace O'Malley the saying goes true that hell hath no fury than a woman scorned she is now planning to assault the ship so pero way before this uh, binunyag sa binunyag ni Abel ki Fena that she that he knew uh, Fena's mother really well and uh, some truth to the Goblinites. Na, well, they are a band of devils that Fen has been living under the same roof with them. Eh, pina, ano eh, well, Fen has just said that that they're that all of these that all of these things Abel said about them is bullshit. Basically, so while this was going on. Eh, there's a dilemma going on on uh, on the Bonito whether irerescue nila si Fena or hindi pinaalala lang sa kanila ni ni Shitan that uh, their clan has this uh, long time mission to recover the sword Kusanaki from Eden kaya pala yung angka nila long ago uh, became servitude to the to the Hotmans it's because of the Hotmans connection to then Yukimaru and the rest of the crew is aware of this pero nanaig ang konsyensya ni Yukimaru rito because 
10 years ago yung pagkaka uh, pagkaka save niya kay Fena dala pa rin hanggang dala pa rin niya hanggang ngayon because he just couldn't forget that day na na inabandon na niya isang bata na katulad ni Fena because well Fena was just 7 years old at the time so he decides to rescue Fena himself pinigilan siya ni Shitan but no for this kirmento na rin ni Shitan that K is coming to the sub na well, para sunduin sila and well Yokimaru will have none of that so he set out on his own to rescue Fena final scene pinakita na ni Abel ang mukha ng nanay ni ni Fena sa kanya si um, si Helena at talagang kamukha-kamukha ni Fena so hindi rin makapaniwala si Fena na nung sinabi ni Abel na this is your mother bigat na revelation <laughs> ang bigat mga ka lifestyle so let's break this down ARD style and it's also my first time to do an ASMR review in broad daylight so bear with me pace the pacing was all in good pero there is something that made it really special kasi medyo mabaka ng pacing but there were tense moments there there was a moral dilemma going on and yung final scene na siguro pinakamabigat na revelation in this anime so far I got no complaints for the pacing of this episode Alagang it presented two sides to to its story r- really well if not excellent you know what the pacing made me realize is how heavy the revelations uh, in this episode were okay. the pacing made me realize that talagang mapigat it's a really good way to cap off the first half of this anime's run episode 6 na so we're about to enter the second half so expect more intrigues more action yeah, yan ang sinasabi sa akin ng, yan din ang sinasabi sa akin ng pacing ng episode na to flow naman first gear shift was when and I was finally delivered to Abel by by O'Malley Bakit ko tinawag na gearshift to? Simple lang. <laughs> O'Malley didn't get paid. And that's where her um, her spite for Abel started. Will this spark uh, a feud between them? Definitely. Will this spark uh, will this um, heighten the tension between O'Malley and the Goblin Knights? Probably. And Will there be hell to pay when Yukimaru uh, comes face to face with Abel? Definitely. That's what this gearshift is trying to tell me. Kaya nga gearshift eh. Napa deep dive tuloy ako. <laughs> Second gearshift was when Yukimaru decided to rescue Fena on his own. Shitan even tried to stop him with a, with a sword across his neck but nope. Yukimaru is too, uh, he's too, he's too proud to be scared of that. Basta sinabi lang niya na, no, some, basically, basically, Yukimaru's conscience is now driving him to rescue Fena. It's not the, um, it's not the, uh, the eternal mission of the Goblin Knights or their clan. No, it's far beyond that. He wants to, uh, I think he wants to apologize to Fena for, for abandoning her just like that. That's why I call it a gear shift. Th- third and final gear shift was during the final scene. Nung pinakita ni Abel ang, uh, kay Fena, ang tunay niyang ina, si Helena. Now, bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to? Kasi, before he revealed uh, Fena's true mother, tinawag niyang Princess Fena ito. Hmm. Is Fena actually royalty and not just a hot man? 
That's why I call it a gear shift. It forces me into another deep dive. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, I tell you, mga lifestyle, these three will play a role in the second half of this anime's run. If not for the next episode, sigurado, buong second half of the run, we will, um, we will, we will see these three gear shifts being validated. Plot-wise, malinis. This is no time for a uh, for a silly backstory or um, or an irrelevant side story for that matter. Because mapibigat na revelations ang ikinanap ng ng anime na to sa atin. But here's the thing. Talaga bang yan ang nanay ni Fena, Abel? Hmm. The plot is also telling me that. Well, O'Malley's, um, O'Malley's Fury, we haven't seen, we haven't seen half of it yet. Looks like, um, O'Malley's just getting started with her wrath. Bigat. <laughs> you know, um, uh, the way she assaulted Fena here, talaga kawawa si Fena. If it, if Abel didn't step in to, to save her, wala. Baka tinubo na siya ni Umani. Right. And the plot is also telling me that this will probably motivate Fena to um to be more assertive of herself. Deep dive. Yup, the plot made me deep dive again. Kaya, kasi ganun kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. Yeah, it encourages deep dives like this. So, pace, flow, and plot. Oh hell yeah, they they all came together for this episode. And this anime had a nice way of um, capping off the first half of its run with wow, with revelations and moral dilemmas like this. I think we're going to be we're in for a very very interesting second half so Fella Pirate Princess episode 6 still gave it the two thumbs up. Simply lang explanation ko mga lifestyle. What we learned from this episode has heavy implications for the second half of the run. Ang bigat kasi talaga bang ito ang katotohan ng sinasabi ni Abel kay Fena? Or is uh, will Fena still believe uh, what her father told him about the uh, about all of this 10 years ago before they got separated on uh, on the hope this is also a battle of truths and we saw it the first time right here in this episode kaya two thumbs up ang ibinigay kong rating ganong kabigat ang mga nangyari dito sa episode na to it will definitely carry over in the second half of this episode of this anime's run ano gets you na See you on the second half of this anime's run. So again, Fena Pirate Princess, Episode 6. In the tradition of Tokyo Revengers, Night 2041, and Sunny Boy, no teasers again. So fucking what? I'll just do the drill, Michael. I don't know about you. I'm gonna wait for next week and watch episode 7. That starts the second half of this anime. It's fun, kasi. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, Michael Lifestyle. <sighs> to 
tuloy ang bakbakan. They were trying to find an opening in the mothership. And well, syempre, tumulong ang ang uh, ang contingent ni ni Musashi. So, well, uh, binigyan lang niya kasi ng payo si Takuma na before you go gung-ho, let us help you find McDonald. Sabi to that effect. So, ganun nga nangyari. Oh, yun, nakanap nila si McDonald on specifically where he is. So, uh, pasok sila sa mothership. Nakahanap na yung pinaka-entrance. Yung Uh, yung sub-entrance na nasa loob, nahack nila yon But the main one, the one fronting uh, the ARC team, they, they just can't get through. So while this was going on, uh, kinocover fire naman sila ni, ano, ng Gettersaurus team. So, ang makakapasok lang to sa loob si Kamui. So, pasok siya. He was able to uh, find the, um, the locks. Pero, minit siya ng contingent ni McDonald. Sabi lang ni McDonald, oh, to. In that fang of mine is the data uh, concerning bug yung padadala nilang device sa sa nakaraan. They really wanted to destroy Getter. Now, dito na recall ni Kamoy ang sinabi sa kanya ng kapatid niya si Uh, yung yung emperor ngayon ng dinosaur empire make sure that ghetto robo is destroyed wow after uh, opening the the gateway kami goes missing nakabukas na so papasok na sana ang papasok na sana sila sila takuma and ang sumalubong naman sa kanila si mcdonald with usala the uh, i think the, this is the ultimate Uh, battle robot of the Hyaki Empire yung hindi nagamit dahil namatay na kagad si Emperor Bly we all know what happened to him if you if you haven't seen Get the Robot G panoorin yun <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you kasi pala eto pala ang driving force ni McDonald he wants to avenge Emperor Bly's death at talagang sinisisi niya nito ang Getter his chance magkaharap na silang dalawa ni Takuma at ito namang si Takuma galit na galit na galit na galit wow ni, i, i, kinakalma na nga siya ni, ni Bako eh. he, he almost did not listen to the guy so he just kept on pounding pero Usala is just too tough then came a time na uh, na pin down sila ni Usala Takuma just told Bako to believe in themselves dahil Their bloodline says it all. They have the Getter race in them. But whoa! They have found a way to destroy Uzala and McDonald with it. Boom! Patay si McDonald. Nakaganti na rin si Takuma. After Takuma's revenge is complete, they almost forgot Kamui. <laughs> so balik sila sa London Mothership. At ano sumalubo sa kanila? An unstable star border. Yung interdimensional parang transporter ng Andromeda Sleration the bastard set it to self-destruct mode ito pala ang plano nila all along na to self-destruct hoping na masasama ang 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 Gather Emperor unit ni ni Musashi pero ang nasama si si Ark Musashi's contingent survived the um the disaster pero um only 70% of them survived it final scene we go back to the present timeline and what well, lahat ng stokers yung openings ang ginawa ng Andromeda Acceleration nagsilaho ng lahat but Getter Arc is yet to come back to them so Nagpasya na si, si Professor Jin na i-shutdown ng South Tome Lab. And uh, nagtaka rin sila siya at yung isa niyang, at yung, yung talaga second ng kaman niya. Bakit? Eh, hindi mo mabalik yung mga bata. And, they're referring to, they're referring to Takuma, Bako, and Kamuy, of course. Sinabi lang ni, 
Nijin. They're out there. I would have I would have saved them myself, but no. He has a point. So all they have to do right now is wait for for Ark to return. Wow. Gundam Kong Road to the finale dito. Gundam ko na final three episodes na ng Gather Robo Arc. So let's break this episode down ARD style, shall we? Base. <laughs> Opening scene pa lang. Napaka tense na. <laughs> Napaka tense ng pacing. Talagang. Well, for the pacing, we've found out that they're. Um, that. Um, to call this Kamui and his half brother uh, I forgot his name already but uh, he's the current emperor now ah yun si Gord III kasi magkapadat sila sa amin Gord III um, requested Kamui to make sure that Geta Robo is destroyed in their mission through the pacing of this episode it will make you ask this question itutuloy pa ba ni Kamui ang request sa kanya ng kanyang half brother at yung siempre yung bilin sa kanya ni McDonald yung bilingi yung ipinabiling sa kanya na that has all the data for bug I don't know what bug means pero yun Robert's celebration is up to no good and they're trying to to brainwash Kami Kamui with this one but the pacing was um, fast enough for you not to not to notice these um these finer details only veteran anime fans will get these uh uh will get these red flags this is the kind of pacing a a 70s mega anime would go through and we all know get the robo started in the 70s kaya right now dala nila ang Ang, uh, what you call this that culture of uh, on how to pace an episode flow the one first gear shift was when the gather arc and gather source teams decided to um to follow Musashi's plan of infiltrating the mothership so kumaga back up lang ngayon si gather soros through this gear shift we can say that Um, Takuma's thirst for revenge it should not be um, it should not be held back so uh, Musashi made the right call here na pagbigyan ng bata na ipagigantin niya ang kanyang nanay so you know, they, they found a way to um, to locate McDonald nakakita rin nila wow I don't know guys but this kitchen is also trying to tell me that The Andromeda's generation had this plan from the very start. Siguro, yeah, they they have the star border, so that well, that means they got the ability to go back in time as to what is about to happen in this battle. Don't you think? Mo kung alam na nila na ha hanapin ni Takuma si McDonald in this uh in this point in time at alam din nila na si Kamoy lang ang makakapasok sa 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 booby trap na yon for the uh, for the entrance leading to uh well to where McDonald is but it's just a theory of mine but hey this gear shift made me deep dive kaya nga gear shift eh second gear shift was Uh, when McDonald gave come with that uh, that fang of his na may data na regarding that device they're they're going to send through the um, through the uh, their their transcendent knowledge at the star border I don't know why they are pinning Kamui for the situation I think the Andromeda's generation knows that um, that Getter is the common enemy. They're well aware of that. So they are now trying to convince the dinosaur empire to work for them through Kamui. Pero ewan ko lang ha. Because um, on the side, 
if you're if you're gonna think this over from the side of the dinosaur empire, ugh, their existence is also threatened. But they still want to get their robot destroyed. Well, that's bad blood for you. But for this, um, for this, well, talagang the enemy right now is the Andromeda generation. But I don't think, I do not think. Kamui will uh, will send out to the Andromeda generation. We don't know. Again, it's just a theory of mine. Final gear shift was when ayon natrap na si natrap na si Ark in this um, self destruct sequence initiated by the Andromeda generation. Hindi nga nila alam eh. All all they wanted was to was to get Kamui back. Kasi uh, Kamui's comms went silent so we can assume now that he's missing so kaya nga siyang hinahanap nila takom eh after defeating McDonald and well here they are ayun tinrap sila ni Kong Ming yung yung pinaka commanding general ng Andromeda Generation and in this star border self-destruct sequence kaya it's a suicide mission for the Andromeda Generation but Were they, were they successful in completely taking out Ark? You know, tanong. That's why it's called the gear shift. These three gear shifts that I saw. Oh hell yeah, they will play a role in the final two episodes. There's that question to be answered. Um, susundin pa ni Kamui ang bilin sa kanya ng kanyang ng kanyang kapatid na si Emperor Gordo III. Well, if you ask me, Gore hates Kamui because well he he is half human. So and of course he's also a threat to the throne kasi dalawa naman silang anak ni ni Gordo II eh. And right now, uh, Gordo III is the emperor kasi panganay. So you can you can also you can also say that there's a uh, there's a sibling rivalry here, and I think Gore is reaching out to Kamui to no avail. Yes, yeah. I I hope no. simply put, I hope Kamui does not uh, does not sell out to the Andromeda Federation or. Uh, give in to the dinosaur empire's wishes to to get rid of Gather Robo completely. Plot wise, malinis. Bakit? Because yung sort of um, recollection scene ni Kamui at na uh, at ni Takuma while he was. While he was trying to kill McDonald, they're sort of negligible. They don't interfere with the uh, with the main continuity of this episode, so they can they can be considered negligible. Pero yung yung uh, recollection scene ni Kamui that's vital. Kasi nalaman natin na ba? Ito pa lang sinabi ni ni Emperor Gore sa kanya. Aba eh. Sino ba, sino ba talaga ang kanino ka ba talaga kampi kamoy pa getter pilot ka baka nakakalimutan mo so through the plot through this clean the plot we can uh, sip, we can thoroughly deduce now that kamoy is in a moral dilemma of sorts sino ba talaga ang susundin niya ang uh, well Si Professor Jin who commands the Saltomi Lab or his brother Gordo III who's the current emperor of the Dinosaur Empire. If you don't call that a dilemma, I don't know what will. The plot will make you realize that. Kasi ganun kalinis. If you're encountering a plot that clean, yeah, it'll make you deep dive and well, just consider all the possibilities for the next few episodes at least so base flow and plot
they all came together for this episode. Talagang mararamdaman mo na patapos na ang Ghetto Robo Arc. Grabe si Tao Marito. Lintik ang init ng ulo. Wow, but if it weren't for that temper of his, he might not have beaten Ozala and killed McDonald in the process. Talagang siguro nagising yung Ghetto Rizal ng katawan nila ni, ni Baco. And of course, through his motivation. So, it further um, powered up Gather Arc. I say, oh, he does control. He does control Gather Arc. So he's the one. He's the one in the controls right now. Kaya, grabe. Uh, maybe we can call that move of Arc um, Gather Comet. Talagang ane. Eh? Uh, they just ran through Usala. Now, and I'm glad Mega Animes don't follow the Monster of the Week format anymore. <laughs> it's for these moments that I go. That I can nearly reserve by yung ane, yung mga kalamang monster after one, after one or two episodes, do nila kalaban nito. Ganon dapat for these times, at least. So, get the Robo Arc episode 11. Si Gon Lagay na lang talaga ang uh, nagdadala sa legacy ng Gather Robo. It took um, it took 20 years for Gather Robo Art to become an anime. Actually, 2001 kasi pinabdish ang ang manga nito. So, yeah, it took quite a long time. Pero sana, no, magkaroon nila ng, uh, ng isa pang Gather Robo series. F- I- Siguro, in the mode muna of Gather Robo Go, alternate storyline basta ma-follow lang yung uh, fo- formula na tatlong vehicles na interchangeable yan parang ganun yan because right now no mecha anime has tackled that kind of a of a formula wherein several vehicles would merge into one mega robot and still be interchangeable to form another one wala eh get a robo lang talaga ngayon so I'd be a little bit sad if this anime actually ended pero hey who am I? Uh, I'm not B. Mija I am not even Gola Guy hims- I'm not even the great Gola Guy himself but <sighs> let's just enjoy the upcoming final two episodes alright so again Get the Robo Arc, episode 11. Deserves another mic drop. Another two thumbs up for this great Get the Robo series, mga guys. So, title of the next episode has been teasered. Yun lang. <laughs> well, you know the drill, mga guys. We will wait for next week and watch episode 12. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <sighs> Nagkasabukan sila ano rito? Sila Kimi at si Chameleon. Well, Kimi and 
Yui were able to save uh, Nagisa. Yay. And now that leaves uh, Kimi one on one with Chameleon, or so it seems. Big Lang um assists si, uh, Char. She's been having this bad feeling that um, that's all too familiar with her. Because, uh, parang I don't know. She she's grown to uh, have this uh, what you call this this anti space bad vibes kind of thing going on on her body. So, uh, nakainala siya na na manggugulo ang spes dito kaya pala siya nandun sa barkong yun and well he, she was able to give the assist to Kimi talagang every uh, every high powered gun imaginable ginamit niya rito kay Kimi yun even that wow that, that that sick looking gatling gun <laughs> it's one of the scariest guns ever invented I tell you and you're going to use this on uh, on just one on just one organism yep that would be overkill for her if it's against an ordinary human but this is chameleon na halimaw ang mohong na to so yep she found the right gun for the job and while um uh Kimi saw an opening he stabs chameleon right here ginanti naman siya ni chameleon ano pinipis yun yung chanya rito so wow it's it, it's one hell of a standoff. So, well, nagkaroon ng pagkakatong si, uh, si Char to, uh, to use that long-range sniper rifle on Chameleon. She was able to pull it off. Pero, ang ginawa naman ni Chameleon, he destroys the fort from under Kimi and him. So, pero sila, pero sila naman na namalay. So, while Kimi was unconscious. He had these, um, he had this all important flashback moment, I think, which uh, made him remember what Siesta's dying wish was. Simply lang. Take down space for me. Mm. And she did this by um, overwriting Hell's consciousness. Siguro naman natatandaan niyo pa kung paano pinatay ni Hell si, si, si Siesta, di ba? Dinukot yung puso, nilagay ito sa sarili niya, chest cavity. As a replacement of, our, of the heart she, um, of the heart, of her heart that was destroyed. So, ang ginawa ni Siesta, through that, na take over niya ang katawan ni Hell in order for her to deliver her dying wish to Kimi. Yun nga. So right there and then, nawala na si Siesta. At doon, nakisin na si Kimi. And well, he decides not to run away anymore. Sinagupaan niya si Chameleon. Then all of a sudden, BAH! Nagisa interferes. But, whoa! Iba ang aura ni Nagisa rito. And surprisingly, she is holding Siesta's feared rifle. Yung anti-space rifle niya. And she's talking to Kimi like the way Shiesta would. Humarap na lang siya kay Kimi. Ayun, yung mata ni Shiesta ngayon ang nandun sa mga, sa mga sockets niya. That was the final scene. Pero, ang parting shot ni Kimi doon. So, have you had enough napping, Shiesta? Hmm... Wow, that, that sent chills up my, up my spine, the final scene. That, grabe. So, let's break this down ARD style. Pace. The opening scene wasn't actually um, determining of the overall pacing of the episode. Kasi, Kimi was having a moral dilemma. Uh, as we left him in the final scene of episode 10. While he, while he was being faced with this moral dilemma, it made him go into flashback mode. Sinabi sa kanya ni Kimi noon na uh, she always holds her client's best interest at heart. Dumip dive naman si Kimi tungkol doon. She is not just referring to her actual clients but to the people around her. Ngayon, sinabi niya kay Kimi noon na your answer, your answer has been decided long ago. Bila na niya yung tentacle, nahulog si Nagisa pero 
Naisal ba siya ni Yui? So, but now that's for from that point onwards, it was sort of fast-paced all the way, except for uh, the dream sequence. Another dream sequence ni Kimi. Medyo ano lang, para nagbagal lang ng konting konti lang na ganon. If it weren't for the pacing of this episode, I might have not appreciated it. Kasi parang nakita ko na to before eh. But iba yung iba yung dating dahil sa pacing. Close to impeccable ang pacing ng episode na to. Flow naman. First gear shift was when Kimi just decided on who to save. Pinara niya yung tentacle ni Camillion. Faye saved uh, Nakisa pero in the time of Nick si Yui. <laughs> Kung medyo late siya by a few seconds, wala na. <laughs> Namatay na to si Nakisa. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. This gear shift will also tell you that Kimi is slowly asserting himself in this episode alone. You could say it's a um, character development moment for Kimi. Yung particular gear shift na yun. Because, well, he's up against one of the monsters of space. Si Kami yun. And, well, you know what happened uh, if you've seen the episode of this. Second gear ship was, well, when uh, Kimi had this, had this dream sequence. Bakit ko tinawag na gear ship to? Well, simply lang. It's a no-brainer of a gear ship because this is where Kimi remem- finally remembered Siesta's dying wish. Kaya lang siya nakarimod dahil sa pollen na binitawa ng, ng halimaw na napilatay nila noon. Kasi ano siya, parang, parang plant type monster siya. Na bigla may mga tubo-tubo bulaklak dito noong namatay. So, the pollen that came out of that, parang na-intoxicate si Kimi. And it made him, wow, forget that part of his memories for the past, I think, two years. For the past two years, nakalimutan niya yun. Ganon katindi ang kamandag ng bulaklak na to. And it was all too familiar with him for uh, with, with that, with that uh, the smell of that pollen. Ito rin yung amoy ng drogang itinistribute dun sa, sa eskwelahan niya. That was, uh, I think that was the first case they, and that was the second case they cracked. Yung asa yan, silang dalawa ni Siesta. Yung pala, spes pala ang may, ang may pakana nun. You can consider this entire episode already as a hell to pay moment for Kimi. And that gear shift made me realize it just now. Final gear shift. Well, all of a sudden, Siesta's consciousness awakens. Tandaan niyo, ang puso ni Siesta ay nakinakisa. And it really makes you wonder, how in the fuck did was Nagisa able to use that that anti-space gun of siesta? Well, <laughs> simply lang din nasagot dyan. Kasi nagising na si siesta. She did it once again. Remember, in the dream se- in the last dream sequence, Kimi had, ganun din ang ginawa ni, ni siesta kay Hell. Kaya niya natalo si Hell. Even, uh, uh, I think Hell's biggest mistake was to claim Siesta's heart for her own. Eh, this gear ship also, well, the, well, actually the last two gear ships will also tell you that Siesta's consciousness is, it's off the chain. Kumbaga, it can materialize itself whenever the need may be. It's probably due to her, due to Shasta's delegation as a detective. Yeah, the grind she goes through. It will, yeah, it can, it can manifest. Mental and spiritual energy is still one of the greatest mysteries in this world. So, 
anything can happen. This gearship will also tell you that. Laking tuwa ko na. Ay, thank God. May katulong na si Kimit para sa para sa halimaw na to. <laughs> These three gearships that I saw. I tell you, mga kalaistal, it will play a role in the finale. Plot-wise, planchado, you gotta understand, this is a crisis Kimi is in. Eh, mira mo, na, oh, Yui has already successfully evacuated all the passengers of that boat. And practically, silang dalawa na lang, si Kimi at si Camillo na lang ang natira sa barkong yun. And of course, um, the assist by Char and Fubi. Fubi was actually piloting the helicopter, so so that Char can start shooting at Camillon, which he did. Kaling palang bumaril to, grabe. So you need a plot this well ironed out to fully grasp what is totally going on with Kimmy's mindset. At least, kasi dalawang bagay kasi ang na uh, ang na tandaan ni Kimi rito. Um, she has this mission statement that um, always help, always hold your client's best interest at heart. Yeah, that's probably her mission statement. And of course, her last wish: take down space for me. Bigat nun. Ang dating sa akin, eh, parang, yeah, parang last will and testament. <laughs> Ganon kapigat. This well-ironed out plot will make you realize that. Ganon ka-organized ang plot ng episode na to. Well, it's not necessarily clean kasi it didn't follow uh, the same continuity of the episode. Pero, nonetheless, this, the recollection and dream sequences that happened in this episode, were vital to Kimmy's character development in this episode alone. So, with the plot, you can say that Kimmy has already accepted the role as the world's greatest detective. He's no longer a psych. He can no longer call himself a psychic probably after this. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. And wow, what a setup for the finale next week. So, the detective is already dead. Episode 11. Hindi ko patatagalin talaga ang review na to. I just want to mentally prepare myself for the finale of this anime. I really want to see how uh, how Kimi and Nagisa slash Siesta is going. How, how are they going to finish off Chameleon? I also want to see in the finale that how uh, how far. Kimi has accepted his role as as a detective. Kumbaga, tatalikuran na niya ang psychic uh, mentality niya and um, how he's going to fully embrace the detective the lead detective role. Mm. Imagine a high schooler being uh, being this good a detective. Well, he's got a great mentor. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 11. There's another my drama lifestyle. Title of the finale has been teasered. <laughs> Let's just do the drill my lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch the finale. So until then, my lifestyle. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Vio 
Yola is taking the initiative of helping her brother out in uh, in the aspect of removing the curse. So, Meron Shang, uh, well, she sifted through the old um, old things of the mansion with, of course, with uh, with Walter's help. Siempre, natin lahat na nakipagpustahan si Walter kay Duke na well, whoever uh, whoever finds the solution to 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 break his curse needs to step aside as the as the heir to the family the family fortune hindi naman siya magpapatalo so kaya niya tinulungan si Viola Viola found this servant's logbook which was written a few years ago uh, around the time the Duke was the Duke was cursed so mukhang mukhang may mukhang may lead sila dito so of course she went back to the Duke's mansion and uh, nakitulog siya uli kay, kay Alice but hindi lang si Alice ang makikitulog dito si Cuff din before she forgot that logbook binigyan na niya kay Alice and well as I, I think a few days later tinignan ni, ni Alice ang contents ng logbook along with Rob Uh, meron pala siyang meron palang entry si Rob doon na si Rob mismo ang sumulat so pinahanan niya hindi na ma-recognize si Rob ang sarili niyang handwriting <laughs> oh my god the guy's really getting senile but anyway there was one entry there na medyo na intriga si Alice that there were two uh, women in nuns habits na bumisita sa main mansion pero hindi niya natapos pa sa akin kasi dumating bigla ang Duke at si Zane. Zane delivered a message from Daleth. Uh, sabi daw ni Daleth, let's be friends. Pero yun pala, front lang pala ni Daleth yun. Because uh, it was later found out in the episode na that she threatened Zane to harm Cuff. Kapag hindi niya sinira ang logbook na to. So, ngayon, paano? So, eh, well, actually, kayong pronta siya ng Duke. Na, so, paano nalaman ni Dalet ang tukos sa logbook na yan? Ganito yung kinwento ni Zane. Dalet has eyes all over this mansion. She, it's one of her, um, I think it's one of her specialties. Ganito kalakas na witch si Dalet. And, at sinabi niya kay Duke, right now, she is watching us. So, eh, hindi naman daw niya nabasa itong logbook. So, she, he doesn't know the contents. Ngayon, ang sinabi niya kay... Well, ang pinakita niya kay Duke, yung kanyang secret magic. In his hand is the logbook, he made it disintegrate. Pero, meron siyang tinirang isang pirasong papel from that, uh, from that logbook. Tinago niya which now gives him uh, the ability to restore it. Wow. I never thought Zane would uh, is this powerful a witch. Kaya sinabi niya, mali ito. This is totally wrong to to threaten me like that with cuff with, by putting cuff in her hands. No way. So, uh, kung maga, kinunsyaban na lang niya ang duke na, kung yari, Uh, kung yari, na na nasunog na niya yung yung logbook so remind on na si Duke bakit mo sinunog bakit mo sinunog kailangan ko yan off went zing and well sinabi na lang ng Duke na nasa akin yung kasi tinatanong sa kanya ni Alice later on kung nasan yung logbook well, sinabi na lang niya na nasa kanya ang logbook para hindi mag-alala si Alice. And well, he basically he basically told Alice that he's going to protect her at all costs. What I thought was the final scene, talagang, it's probably uh, the heaviest scene I have seen in this anime. We've finally seen what Dalith really looks like. Kasi yung, yung buo niya yun, it's not their true face. It's just a mask. Magandang babae si Dalith. Although she has stitches here, here, and here. Uh, although deformed, pero look beyond those stitches. Maganda si Dalith. 
and she would be uh wow she could she could really pass off for for a saint actually tapos naka nakadamit nakadamit madre siya and she raised the cover of this sarcophagus so to speak there lies Sharon's body yung bangkay ng nanay ni Alice ay nandun so I thought what in the hell is Sharon's body doing here uh, what's the deal Daleth what's the fucking deal final scene is actually the post credit so a letter from the Duke's mother comes to the mansion so pinuksan ng Duke It says like this. Come to the mansion in a week's time. Ano to pinababalik na siya sa mansion ng, ng, ng nanay niya? Oh, oh, by the way, we now also know what her mother, what his mother looks like. Magandang babae pero manang. <laughs> Whoa. This looks like a great setup for a great finale. So let's break this episode down, ARD style. Pace. Things got tense. Uh, the pace picked up nung... Pinaki, nung... Uh, pinatawag ni Dalit si Zane. From the way her mask looks, talaga wala na akong tiwala sa kanya. May tinatago ang witch na to. Especially to the Duke. Lo and behold, She has, uh, she has Sharon's dead body in her, uh, in her keep. Imagine what Alice can do to, uh, to, to Dalit, to Dalit's pretty face. <sighs> I don't know why, is, why is Dalit desecrating Sharon's body like this? But this is what the pacing will. This is what the pacing is actually telling me. Dalit is up to no good. And she knows a thing or two about the Duke's curse. Mukhang yung entry sa logbook na yon, it checks out. Talagang may nalalaman si Dalit tungkol sa sumpa ng Duke. And why the witch that actually placed this curse on the Duke is gone. Mukhang marami nalalaman itong si Dalit. Na hindi niya, sinasa- na hindi niya sinabi sa Duke the time When the Duke and Alice were at the Witch's Sabbath, that was episode 7. Dalit has a lot of explaining to do in the finale. That's what the pacing of this episode is telling me. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift was when um, Viola decided to give this logbook to Alice. Malaking bagay ito because what Uh, what Alice seemed to find out in this logbook mukhang mukhang may lead sila dito because it told of two women in nuns' habits ay bumisita sa mansion ngayon ang ang sumulat pa ng entry na ito ay ang mismong nanay niya si Sharon looks like the pieces are coming together in this puzzle because of that gear shift If that ain't a gear shift to you, I don't know what is. Second gear shift was when um, Zane revealed to the two that he's uh, that Dalit is threatening to harm Cuff. That's why he's about to. That's why he was about to burn the logbook. Pero na what well, napisto na siya ng Duke. So as a as a uh, as a symbol of their friendship, he comes clean. Sinabi niya lahat sa Duke na binabantaan siya ni, ni Daleth tungkol sa logbook na yan Daleth wants that logbook burned or else uh, Zane had no choice and the Duke completely understands him kasi if that were if that were to to happen to Alice kung gagawin bargaining chip si Alice he might have the Duke might have done the same thing so he forgives Zane and he even allowed Zane to burn the logbook pero sinabi ni Zane no sorry it's still wrong so he that's where he revealed his secret magic yung 
kumbaga i-disintegrate niya ang isang bagay pero pag meron siyang itinirang uh, piraso ng bagay niyon he can restore it that is sick magic mga ka lifestyle this is what this gearship is telling me to have uh, a powerful friend and ally like Zayn by his side whoa the Duke has all the leverage right now that's the way I see it of um, ringing out the information needed to break his curse so right now Zayn is the key kasi nasa kanya ngayon yung piraso ng logbook na itinira niya siya ang nagtatago nun ngayon now that's what I call a gear shift final gear shift was when oh, oh, Dalit finally shows her true face I gotta admit guys ang ganda niya um, she's even more beautiful than either Sharon or Alice talagang maganda si Dalit except for the stitches she, she has on her face well guys look beyond that maganda si Dalit hindi nyo mapagkakama ng witch ito mapagkakama nyo pa ang madre ito talagang her face is um, wow saintly and beautiful pero marami siyang tinatagong sikreto number one there is why is she keeping Sharon's body in her um in her temple of sorts bakit nasa kanya ang bangkay ni Sharon imagine if Alice finds this out wow if the dog finds out that Alice is sad he will go to great lengths just to wipe that sadness off her face the dog knows Sharon very well kasi uh, Alice's mother used to be the head maid of the main mansion he grew up watching watching Sharon work her ass off as the as the head maid in all indications this gearship is telling me that if the duke finds this out there is hell to pay curse or no curse there is hell to pay these three gearships they're telling me one thing we are bound for a great finale plot wise planchado bakit? because every recollection I've seen here if there is any will lead to the finale kumbaga uh, pumigibak lang ang main continuity ng episode na to sa mga recollections na yun the plot is that well ironed out mga ka lifestyle which makes it a great episode so pace, flow, and plot I almost didn't I almost wasn't able to distinguish one from the other especially the pacing and the plot yung flow yung gear shifts no they're easy I've never had such a difficult time with the pacing and the plot talagang hinibla ng mabuti ng JC staff ito this particular episode talagang they are setting us up for probably one of the best finales this anime season I just couldn't wait. So, the talk of death and his main episode 11. Hindi ko na nipatatagalin ang review na to, mga ka-lifestyle. You can see the look on my face that <sighs> JC staff has just set us up for a really big finale for this for this anime. I just couldn't wait, Mahaka Lifestyle. How about you? So again, the talk of death and his mate, episode 11, deserves an right drop. title of the finale has been teasered don't trust it yet just do the drill mga ka lifestyle we're gonna wait for next week and watch the finale of this anime so in the meantime 
enjoy the other reviews in this digest or yeah enjoy them all